Dark Sea Devil. Is that how you say it? Dark Sea Devil? Or is it Dark Sea Devil? Or Dark Sea Devil? Hi, my name is. What? My name is. Who? My name is. Dark Sea Devil. Hi, my name is. What? My name is. Who? My name is. Oh. <laughs> Slim Dark Sea. Good morning, everybody out there. How you doing? Oh, my God. I really have a bad track record with this ghost now. This is getting embarrassing. I apologize. I really wish this ghost had an auto-on feature, but it does not. Anyway, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast. I am Dark Side Phil. Today is my final consecutive streaming day of the week, which incidentally is also the final day of August. It is August 31st, 2022. Welcome to the show. We've actually got a good amount of stuff to talk about today. Uh, in particular, in the realm of gaming news, we had some interesting announcements overnight about certain gaming companies being purchased or partially purchased by investors. I want to talk a little bit about the implications of that this morning. Um, today also was early review day for The Last of Us Part 1, also known as The Last of Us Re-Re-Release. Yes, that's really what it should be called, not Part 1, because there already is a Part 1. It's just not called Part 1. It's called just The Last of Us. So I prefer Re-Re-Release. It more accurately describes what the game is. Um, not surprising what the reviews are, Although I would like to add some commentary to it. Admittedly, I'm happy to hear about a lot of the good things in this game. Uh, notably, the accessibility features, which sound like a huge triumph. And I would like to obviously go over that <clears throat> on the podcast today. Because this is something huge that I feel should apply to all future AAA releases. Um, however, that doesn't ignore the fact that, uh, you know, pretty much every single person who reviewed the game is not addressing the $70 price point on purpose. So we will talk about that today. And of course, we have a, a schedule update because you guys voted overnight. And the question was for today's main gameplay stream, what did you see? What did you want to see me play? Would it be the continuation of Destroy All Humans 2 Repro, which I started yesterday, which the graphically and gameplay wise I was enjoying, but story and plot wise I was really cringing? Or did you want to see me continue on with my playthrough of Saints Row 1? <clears throat> which has been uh, quite good so far, and, uh, I'm really enjoying myself in that regard, and, uh, I, I you know, the fact that we, uh, just finished a bunch of side quests and we're about to do a, a slew of story missions was kind of cool, uh, well, you guys voted, and we're gonna talk about the results of that vote today and how that has implications on the schedule for the next week, because, man, the next week's gonna be very exciting and interesting, for sure, with the stuff that I've got on the agenda. Is it just me, or is the camera, like, aimed a little bit too high i i actually did a a readjustment of the camera camera yesterday i think was it yesterday or the day before when jasper was in the chair here and i think i i might i don't know if it looks okay to you guys i'm going to keep rolling with it unless you think oh it looks like it's it's too is it do you want me to lower it a little bit what do you guys think is it good I don't know. It looks fine. I think it's fine. We'll leave it as it is. Whatever. Okay. So, today is my last consecutive streaming day of the week. And I'll be honest with you guys. Kind of weird because last week was such a long week. It was a seven-day stream week for me. And now this week only being a five-day streaming week, it kind of throws me off. I definitely feel like this week completely flew by in, a, in like a blink of an eye. I don't really feel like we even did that much. While last week, I feel like we did a ton. Okay? For example... I only got to play Midnight Fight Express once. Damn, I really like the game. I wish I played it more, right? I'm only going to get to play Multiverses once tonight. That's it. Um, So it is what it is. Now, next week, it will be a six-day streaming week. Thursday is my day off this week, and Thursday is my day off next week. So it will be six full days of streaming, um, which should be fun. It's going to be good variety, continuing on with my main playthroughs on the daytime, a good variety of stuff at night, a marathon. <clears throat> So definitely, um, 
should be pretty interesting. I'm excited for the week coming up because of the amount of variety that we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, so what should we talk about? Jeez. First of all, I just want to praise Midnight Fight Express again. I've now played it two streams. Each time I've played this game, I've loved it. The, the graphics, the gameplay elements that are getting even more complex the further in that I get. The, the whole vibe of the game in general, the mysterious plot um, and writing, the enemy variety. Every stage seems to be a new type of enemy. Uh, some of the, co the comedy. Last night, there was an actual kind of almost fourth brawl, brawl, fourth brawl, fourth wall breaking stage that stuck a huge kind of jab at game developer, development in general. Because as you know, Midnight Fight Express is an indie game made by one person. So you actually storm a game dev studio where all the game developers are basically crunching to put out a game with a team of 300 game developers. And it's, it's crazy because they're like, you got to work crazy overtime and everything. And I'm, re I'm looking at this. And I'm like, wow, this guy is totally 100% sticking it to the rest of the industry. Saying, you guys you obviously don't know what you're doing if I can make a game by myself and you're killing each other for crunch, right? <clears throat> Amazing music as well. Like, everything about this game, I, I seriously mean this. I don't have a complaint yet. I've been playing it and enjoying it. There hasn't even been a game bug yet. An indie game made by one person with no game bugs. What is going on here? Seriously, like this is blowing my mind, and I'm only I'm four hours into a, what's essentially going to be around an eight-hour gaming experience. Uh, this is shaping up to be one of my favorite games of 2022, and I'm not exaggerating. That's what I mean. Like that's why I'm sad. I only played it once this week. I actually wish I was playing it more because I'm liking the game so much. But it's just the way this kind of schedule is panning out for me right now. I'm not getting a chance to play it more than once. You see, um, I'm having a great time with it. I urge you, if you have Game Pass and you haven't tried Midnight Fight Express yet, give it a shot. It's super, super good. And uh, and there you have it. Now, on the flip side of that, the other game that I played yesterday, I wasn't so in love with, Destroy All Humans 2 Repro. All right? To give you some perspective, I played the original game two years ago when that got a modern remake on modern consoles. That game was interesting. It was a unique combination of kind of, you know, silly, immature humor but that was combined with a plot where aliens just hated humans and wanted to exterminate them all and take over the planet <clears throat> with over-the-top kind of violence and, and, and stuff like that. Was there sexualized humor in it? There was some, but for the most part, it was about hating humans, throwing cows around, destroying them, you know, without any hesitation, ripping the brains out of their bodies and absorbing them, stuff like that. This game is literally 100% sexual humor. The entire game from the minute the game starts the, the main character crypto is thrusting his crotch at the camera all of the jokes are based around this character arc doodle or arc voodle who i guess is an alien god that was always on earth and was praised for the size of his penis i'm not kidding that's the plot and so you're going around trying to indoctrinate people to the cult of arc voodle you're trying to stop a Russian KGB from trying to take over the world by using your alien technology, and every joke is sexual in nature. Every what the fuck is this guy talking about? Joe. <clears throat> okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this to uh, thing. All right. I'm Apparently, not you were here before I was. Who is going to be high and mighty and be like, "Oh, all sexualized." Oh, we're getting this bad. again. All we're gonna get this every day now. Is evil and immature. You guys can go back to my past as a content creator. You can see the kind of Every stuff day. I used to do years ago. I'm better now. You know, I'm better now. I'm better now. Please believe me. With the humor of this game. But what happened? Over time, people began to get tired of me, saying, Phil, your shtick is old. It's cringeworthy. You're literally constantly making jokes for 13-year-olds. It's boring. It was funny the first year you did it, and then after that, <laughs> right? This is great. He's roasting himself. What ended up but it's the old was, himself, so it's okay. Where it was just out of control. You see, and it was just so out of control that we needed you to change. We begged you to change. We said, you're being a dinosaur. You're being outdated. You're not with the times. People want <laughs> we more begged time you to change, People and then we left. Intelligent content. They don't want to see a guy in his 30s saying, sex, 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 boob, boob, boobs, dick, dick, dick. Is this intelligent seconds. content right now? Clip. That's okay. Intelligent? <laughs> see? So I changed. I evolved. I said, okay. Evolved. I, I got to change for the better. All right, this game, which came out in 2006, by the way, this was not a game that came out in the 1990s or in the heyday of the original Grand Theft Auto games. 
This was after that, all right? This game that already had a game, its original one, you know, a couple years before, that didn't have that kind of over-the-top 100% sexualized humor. Oh, wow, what was this? Humor, among other things, decided to <laughs> a go massive that route actively. Eski's right? telling you how he's and much better really now. this is my one criticism of the game so far, because outside of that, the graphics of this remake are quite good. Full 60 okay, frames first of all, the graphics are good. We get the meme of the graphics being good first and foremost. Them, I'm liking them. The gameplay elements are pretty good. They changed the formula in the first game. It was kind of like, here's a bunch of missions you gotta complete, and here's a sandbox, but also here's some mini games and things. In this case, every every city is like a sandbox thing, like GTA. Like you're doing you're doing a series of GTA style maps. Whoa, it's uh, GTA style maps. Like from the start. But you could also use your, your, get your him out of here 15 games years stuff. games covered for formula, this for comparing everything to gta fucking lame ass actually hook someone i wanting to play the game more if you'll enjoy the gameplay but my god if you don't have an incredibly immature mind the fact that this game is literally throwing sexualized humor at you every moment you're playing it it's just overkill allow me to explain the difference all right oh my god <clears> you don't have watching, to explain everything know, and there's a running joke that there's a character that really likes chocolate. That's just their running joke, is that they love chocolate. So every once in a while, I see the character eating a chocolate bar. They have puns in their dialogue referencing chocolate. And, you know, chocolate, chocolate. Okay. So that's the running joke with the character. That's great. But then the show has other themes and things going on. All right? So you could argue, all right, maybe it's a little silly. But that's the running joke. You get it. Right? Now imagine there's a show. The entire show is about chocolate. Like, every character loves chocolate. The universe has everything. Imagine made of a show where the whole Every show is about money. The whole show is about the showrunner making money. Imagine a show like that. That would be so cool to watch. Chocolate. When they're fucking, they're fucking in chocolate. Whoa, like, they're fucking in chocolate. Everything is chocolate in the entire universe. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. He's talking about chocolate because it's more acceptable than liquid diarrhea that he usually talks about. Show and say I've had enough of chocolate. And Just she replace chocolate with doo doo, and you get what DSP is actually thinking about. Change the channel. That's the plot of Destroy All Humans too. It's called chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. To the exponential value, and that's the problem. The I exponential have value. Me. It's not that it's sexualized <laughs> humor. It's that it's too much of the same sexualized humor overused. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understood too... before the 15 fucking <laughs> separate explanations of everything. Uh, I understood. You know, facets to the plot. Besides, we got everything it. Everything in the game is sexualized. That's It's too much. And it makes me cringe. And the thing is, I don't like cringeworthy shit. I cringe at it for a second. I say, okay. Then, then why are you cringeworthy shit? So I'm going to be honest with you. If, if literally. <laughs> you hated. Uh, you became what you hated, DSP. Cringeworthy shit. I'm going to be incredibly torn playing it. 50% of the time, when I'm oh enjoying my the, God. And the missions and the challenge of that, I'm going to like it. And then as soon as it goes to any part of plot, but I'm going to hate isn't, it. Isn't this literally what boomers do? Isn't this what boomers are? They just get offended by like, oh, oh my God, everything is just so sexualized. They're like, oh my God. You know? What now, a the thing fucking is, boomer. From 2006. It's 16 years old. <clears throat> okay? But the thing just is, like I'm DSP. playing incidentally another 16 year old game right now Yo, in Saints Row 1. He's having two 16 year olds back to back like he's Epstein. And I can compare the two directly and I can say Saints Row 1 absolutely has sexualized humor in it but it also has a lot of other elements to it. That plot is interesting because it's got variety, it's got character development it's got other things going on outside of just sex, 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 sex so it doesn't beat it home. It could have <laughs> sex, 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 sex but you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, that's how life with Leanna was. They decided not to hammer it in and go over the top. This game is so badly over the top that it makes it unbearable. Okay, we, we got the point. The first 15 times. Now, <clears throat> tell us how you changed. Here's the deal. Are you better now? In these games. Are you the Today same guy? More Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed because you voted for it. I did a poll overnight to determine what I would be playing today. And it was about a 60-40 vote, something like that. I didn't okay. check again, but it was definitely strongly leaning towards, you know, like two-thirds of the voting was for Destroy All Humans 2. So that's what we're going with as the main And subtract the today. troll votes. Okay. Fair enough. Should be, should be Multiply by see. the really amounts of pay pigs. Did they do anything different with the plot? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But we're going to make more progress. Currently, we're in Albion, which is their version of London. 
Um, <clears throat> see how far we can get. Maybe get to the next city today and see what that is. Apparently, there's cities all over the world. You're By the way, I'm using a new headset. Uh, it's it's kind of okay. Hopefully, the audio is gonna be fine. Uh, and I do have a dedicated mute button. Along, if this entirety of this game is is just the sexualized humor and they really don't go for any variety i'm gonna get bored i know i am i'm a guy that looks for more in a game you know so please understand that it's just you know my the, the humor may not be for me because it's too much of the same crap <clears throat> okay so let's talk about the schedule this week because now we have a better idea i am also stone so you today, are correct it's more destroy all humans to reprobed on the mainstream and one thing i want to say guys it's been a great month overall all right However, and the bag false copyright strikes against this channel. This has hurt me greatly. Oh this yeah, membership. the copyright right? strikes made people not want to be members. The is the narrative? If you could re up your membership, become a member, or give membership to the, the day channel, is the final it day. It would help me a lot. All right, right now I'm in a situation where unless things change today, when I get paid by YouTube in September, my payment is going to be significantly lower than it usually is. Because yeah, that's how it works. When you get less money, against me you fucking month. crackhead. And that's bullshit. It's not, oh, Phil did something wrong, and he lost Oh, income my God. They were heinous. fake. Literally it was one dude. Like that. It's because people are fucking with me, and then makes people afraid. Come on, DSP. And that's bullshit. That hurts me It is lot. bullshit, because you just that's, fucking made it up. Hand on. That monthly payment I get from YouTube is uh. what I pay my mortgage with, and what I pay my car bill with, and what I pay my monthly utility bills with, and what I do this and that with. And that's a problem if it's now going to be way lower. All right. I do this and that with. So, <laughs> Is that what he just said? Support the channel today in any way. It's greatly appreciated. But the only way that you can really directly help me for next month would be to either re-up your membership or give some memberships to the channel. All right. Thank you to anyone who does. Now, it's not the end of the world. September, I could still be helped basically via tips because tips I get immediately. So it could kind of make up for the fact that I have way less income coming. We'll have to see what happens in September. Maybe I'll have to do something special around the middle of the month. I don't know. Oh, I have to do something because, special. Again, the point of the monthly goal for members was to do a rage -a which I was planning on doing in the middle of September. rage -a, a special event. A rage -a see, Now this is all kind of oh, just... Oh, in a uh, nasty fucking burp. Screwing me over. And it's so... And by the way, no, there's still no updates about these fake copyright strikes. Uh, I get the feeling at this point, because it's been almost a week. I think it was... Was it Thursday of last week when they hit? I think it was. It was either Wednesday or Thursday. At this point, considering it's been a week, I get the feeling we're going to have the slow boat version of clearing these up. Meaning, literally, there's nothing I can do besides sit around kind of with my thumb up my butt and waiting for like YouTube usually to do something. I've already counterclaimed them. YouTube has taken no other action on it. <clears throat> so it may be that I have to wait weeks. It may be, no exaggeration, I have to wait three months. Because that's the maximum that copyright strikes sit on a channel imagine okay. if they hit him with what the I third strike on the last day going on, on the, on the last noticed, day you would have thought there would have been more if this was going to be some kind of a, a, a an issue and there's been nothing there's just those two and that's it nothing else so i'm not worried and like i said even if the worst happens and somehow you shouldn't say you're not worried dsp channel, those people want you to be worried you fucking idiot i have backup plans in place you don't places that we can stream and make content it's not a big deal other that places have to be suspended or go away temporarily but i can totally understand why people would be apprehensive of supporting this channel right now when you don't know what's going to happen but it could be months we i can't i'm sorry i can't go for months without support because we're worried about what do you mean the law with okay. oh my so, god man please rest assured. and he takes this narrative for the stupid gifted memberships man and he takes this and spins it into i can't go months and months without support you see how he blew it the fuck out of proportion and it all stems from a bunch of fake gifted subs that one dude wailed out or a couple of whales wailed out and people didn't renew them because they wouldn't do that anyways and they wouldn't spend money on dsp anyways they just happened to be in his chat if you what do scumbag. support this channel in any way, it still helps. No matter what happens, it's going to help me in the long term. Yes, if you become a member or give memberships, yes, I'm going to get credit for that. It's going to help me. So please consider it, and thank you in advance to anyone who supports this channel in any way. Today would be the last day for a membership to count for this month. So thank you if, if you do happen to take advantage of that. Okay. Now. Let's talk about the schedule. Today, 
Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed on the first stream. Let's see how it goes. Tonight, Multiverses. My only opportunity to play Multiverses this week, which is kind of disappointing, because last week I tried Morty. Which, by the yeah, way, I think you're right. I think he, he really wants to get a strike, but I, I don't think he wants all his content to be deleted and the channel to be taken down. He wants to get as much money as possible from this, but it already backfired on him because the members are down. And, and then he made up this story for the members. He told them, he put that thought in their head. Hey, guys, you know what's going to be a good idea if you don't renew your, your subs? He really is a tantruming spoiled brat. He is, he is, every single day. That's actually pretty impressive. And now I can skip through the, the okay. schedule nonsense. Um, big ups, Jay Kramer, for the I'm super chat. I'm not here chat. tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off. And weekend. big ups, Kenny C, for the membership, dude. Welcome to the children. If you end up doing, please enjoy the day. If you end up watching content here on DSP Gaming when I'm gone, thank you. And uh, please remember things you can do to support the channel in my absence. Liking the videos, leaving comments, super thanks, and tips. Oh my now. god. <clears throat> Oh my, I'm... wait, wait, on your day off? Oh, I, I should be wailing on your day off? You're not even here and I'm spending money on you? Th is that what we're doing now? And uh, please remember things you can do to support the channel in my absence. Oh, in my leaving absence. Videos, leaving comments, wow, super thanks, super thanks. and now. tips. <clears throat> Wail while, while I'm gone. On these shitty videos that get like 500 views. I have noticed a distinct dip in engagement in my content this month oh no and i feel it's because this is literally the month three of, of what no major new releases. oh no releases of course row, where there i never do anything wrong everything is great on so, my part that's gonna obviously affect the channel everyone else Please, is to blame guys, if you like the content <laughs> this is fantastic watching, all right <laughs> if you could help in any way in regards to engagement on dsp gaming i would appreciate it at one point engagement was really good on this channel and every month we were getting exponential new views subs everything <clears throat> and then this came to a screeching haul in the middle of the summer because of basically no releases and it sucks you know i'm putting out content for you guys you're telling me you're enjoying it you're right? telling me you where are here in the comments time, but I that don't exist new viewers <laughs> unless there's a reason to attract them to the channel you know dsp reacts to this is how you don't play metal gear solid 2 can only go so far you know yeah so yeah please consider <laughs> it, it it almost seems like nobody cares about the stupid games you play and they only care about it when there's massive drama involved and you trigger people and you piss people off and they come after you and you play victim that's when people care dsp you still haven't realized it if you do watch the stuff on demand liking the videos and leaving comments i mean i'm ex not exaggerating the last few days Every video I'm putting out, like every other video has no comments. None. Zero. Because it's no trash. Comments. Nothing to say yeah, about the video. Yeah, it's whack. It's garbage. It. Get it out of here. No comments. That's... No comments. Zero. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> you see? We need to get back into... Uh, we definitely need to get back into that... You're distracted, DSP. ...pattern of getting used to engaging with the content again. All right? We need to get back to the pattern. What the fuck is this? A cult? We need to go back to the pattern, guys. You're you're not being good sheep right now. I'm back on Friday. Since we're doing Destroy All Humans Dude today. Well, the, this is the actual fucking brainwashing, man. And then he's like, oh, I'm back on Friday. We're playing Detroit fucking humans. Are, is he playing Detroit Become Human? Uh, at the end of the last stream. He's going to learn how to be human, guys. And then watch out. He's going to milk all the pay pigs. Should be a good time. But he time. still hasn't figured it out. Big marathon event. And this is one that I just decided to do. It's not a reward. Hey, big ups profit for the five it's just gifts, something dude. I set up for fun. It is the Kawabunga Make sure you're Party super Marathon. thankful, Chad. On Saturday, Chad. I'll be playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kawabunga Collection, which features NES games, Super NES games, Genesis games, Game Boy games, arcade games, all oh, featuring he's gonna promote the, Ninja Turtles the from the late the pizza 80s party and now. 90s. It's a really great collection that spans a long period of time when the Ninja Turtles were incredibly popular and were pumping out a ridiculous amount of video games. What I'll be doing during this marathon event is going through the history of Ninja Turtles okay. games from start to start. Fortunately, I paused enough so now I can skip through the garbage. Finished. I this is how I love to restream, when I just pause and then skip. Talking about my history with the Ninja Turtles. Okay, his history. Everything is about his history with stuff because he's really old and thinks he has things to say. Growing up as a kid, how I was introduced. But he's only 40. To them how I ever, I will be ordering oh. pizza. Get a load of this. Live on the stream. All right? 
It will be delivered. I will eat said pizza during the marathon event. I will eat while we're said the the pizza. Games, and it's going to be a pizza party atmosphere. For those of you who are watching, I urge, I, I urge you as are well. Are we going to listen to music? Grab some grub while you're music? playing. It might, might not necessarily be, uh, you know, pizza. But grab some grub and kind of relax with me all day long as I play games and have a good time. All right? Okay. All so, right. So, this should be you should a make good time. Him, uh, be he should make him take a picture with the pizza. It's like, you guys, let's make this hashtag pizza party with Phil. And go on uh, Twitter.com and you can uh, take a picture of yourself and your pizza watching my stream. And then we can all have a nice interactive time eating uh, authentic pizza. Well, you guys will join me all day Saturday, especially if you're a fan of Ninja Turtles. I think you're going to have a great time. And to kind of stroll down memory lane and experience these games, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's a, it'll be a nostalgic trip for you like it's going to be for me. This should be a really special event. <laughs> no, the hashtag should be Pizzagate. It should be Pizzagate. Uh, everyone go on Twitter and leave hashtag Pizzagate. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Um... Then for the rest of the week, which will be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I will be going back to full gameplay streams again. Um, so Sunday would be Destroy All Humans 2 paired with Sunday Night Bites, the Bassmaster fishing stream. Monday, Saints Row paired with Midnight Fight Express. Tuesday, more Destroy All Humans 2 paired with... Where you have a character that lives there. Well, <clears throat> it's essential. It's... it's it's the Disney version of Animal Crossing. Oh my it's a fucking god. Where you have a character that lives there. I don't know if I, I should skip can, through this. You know, edit or build your own home. You perform activities. Because you never know what's going to happen in the present once I skip town, through all the, the garbage. Characters. Maybe he's going to be talking about Disney something even stupider than this. Okay. Um, it is not a full-fledged game. He's just as burping, yet, snorting, farting everything today. What's, what's happening with him? It may not be representative of the final product. They may patch it. They may add more content. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they may tweak content. All right? Now, it comes out on the 5th, but here's the thing. I've already got a schedule jam-packed with stuff. I'm upset I haven't had enough time to play the games that I'm playing. All right? I'll be honest. I want to play Midnight Fight Express and try to beat it this week coming up. Oh, my that God. Means I would have to play now it we're complaining about games it. coming out. Okay? So... If that's the case and that's what uh, I'm doing, then obviously I can't be interjecting more new games into the schedule. All right? So well, here's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> Take Disney Dreamlight Valley, since it is an early game, you know, access anyway. It's not necessarily a full-fledged game regardless. We'll save it for the week after. All right? Once Midnight Fight Express is done, then Disney Dreamlight Valley takes that nightly spa to alternate with wow. multiverses what a, content. what a managerial say, oh, let's move. do another game in the schedule that's absolutely crazy right in addition and semi-inept actually just hit upon this which is another the, thing the was... dude is larping as if he's just uh having like the quarterly board meeting of like apple or something uh, we should move the the release of the new iPhone for the next uh, quarter because now this is uh, the the Samsung Galaxy is releasing. Okay. I want to emphasize, this game is early access, and that means likely it's not finished. There may not be a lot of content in it. It may be kind of you mess with it for a couple hours. You see what the pr the premise is, but it's not done. It's not ready for sale. That's why you can't buy it yet. <clears throat> so it very well could be that. It's something we mess with and like, okay, and then we never do it again after one or two sessions. I don't know. We won't for fifth patient. By the way, the other major game people want to see this month is Earthbound. I'm down for that, but we got to get to a point where that makes sense. Hey, right I heard a good joke, but I was so muted. Many games. Uh, the next new game coming out is Splatoon 3 on September 9th. The good news is after that, okay, skip, skip, skip. Of various, you know, media, you know, not only, you know, the cartoon, but action figures, the video games, the movies, the comic books. And it was weird because I read... Yo, really just this, like, gonna be like get to the of, point, uh, man. What is this? Down. Ninja Turtles again. We're back to fucking pizza party. Henry Lane playing these Ninja Turtles games. Full circle. Cheese. I'm half lactose intolerant, but you know. He's half lactose intolerant in a quarter Italian, in a quarter Pol Polish. Might be, might be farting a lot. What a special we'll person. And he might be farting a lot. What a, what a great humor person. All right. So... <laughs> what a comedian. Right. Outside of that, I think I've covered pretty much everything. 
Oh. Yeah, he's half intolerant. He's not even like for real lactose intolerant. He's just kind of lactose intolerant. <laughs> I wanted to cover. I think we should get to gaming news. That's like lactose curious. It's like bi curious. First of all, let's get to some interesting <laughs> gaming news stories that have absolutely nothing to do with The Last of Us 1. Hey, gaming so stories. Gaming. Enjoy. Okay, I unclicked it. That was weird. Gaming news story number one. Quantic Dream. This is the game studio that made such great games as Heavy Rain. Beyond Two Souls. That's not a great Detroit game. Become Human. As well as some that you probably don't remember. There was that murder mystery game that was like two hours long. Uh, probably no one remembers Indigo Prophecy slash Fahrenheit from back in the day. I do because I did a full playthrough of it when I was relatively new on YouTube. <laughs> This is both like a smug segment and a flex. Nobody fucking remembers this like two hour shitty fucking game, but I do because I, I was there. But <clears throat> I digress. They did really well. Hey, why Detroit why didn't Human. this so pop up well, play? Did they it play? far exceeded the sales expectations they thought they were going to get. And the game went viral on the internet and everyone kind of had this like this really big fan base for it. Uh, big up. Canine well, Delight really for Super Chat. Hashtag lately. Pizzagate Party. Only yeah, multiple games. that's right. One of the games I think they said, did they say it was a Star Wars <laughs> game or something like that? And But we haven't really heard much from them um, in regards to what's going on. And, you know, a lot of controversy because apparently there have been reports that the studio has been having issues with the employees complaining about harassment and all kinds of stuff. I, you know, I don't really know. I haven't been 100% following those plot lines or whatever, but it's been a while. We've heard nothing out of the studio. <clears throat> Out of nowhere, it was announced overnight, Quantic Dream has been fully purchased. This isn't like, oh, an investor came in and threw some money at them. They've been bought out by a company called NetEase Global, all right? This is a Chinese gaming company. Oh, no. And this is a company that had involvement in Diablo Immortal. Oh, we no. all know how that went down. No. Right? Um, among other mobile game ventures so hearing this news <laughs> oh no freaking we're, out. we're done like, wait a minute we're the done whole point of quantic dream was that they kind of did things differently they had this creativeness to them <laughs> the idea of david cage making gotcha games is amazing think about it that think made about feel it. like a true indie kind of studio this is not good if they get bought out by a company like this especially maybe a chinese company they're going to point them in directions that we don't want them to go in. Maybe they're going to force them to make mobile versions of their existing games or maybe even mobile exclusive games, and we don't want that. Well, here's the official press release. I'll read it right off of the Quantic Dream Twitter account. To continue to evolve and dream big, we are delighted to announce that we will be joining NetEase Global. We will retain our artistic independence and champion our teams who benefit directly from this new venture. So, i.e., let's let's put that through the bullshit translator. Do, 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 do. What it really says is, ready? We need money. What? Thanks for the money. We appreciate money, and we're going to use this money to hopefully make bigger and better games because our money somehow dried up. That's literally what it's saying because they what? just came out. With Bro, what the fuck? This is the least insight you could give on a fucking new story i could give more insight than this and i didn't even read the story but this is like negative insight it's literally misinformation it's just like like a crackhead in interpreting a newspaper what the fuck man with their most popular game a few years ago and made tons of money yet they money. need to be bought out by a company Obviously, Bro, this some... dude constantly looking at other people fucking money. Things constantly, go. other people, everybody else constantly is thinking about money, and they need money, and they rake in money, but he can't get money. Only he can't get money, because everybody is against him. But he looks as everybody else money. Why not? It almost sounds to me like something went wrong. Hey, big ups, uh, Juan Rodriguez for the, the membership, of their dude. latest titles, and now they're looking for kind of a, 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 a rescuer, an angel. So to speak. What? And it, you know what they call it? Angel investor? Yes. So it comes along. That's why you call them an angel. For the good of, of, of whatever. It kind for of the good like of whatever. He for. started, he tried starting to explain like a finance term and then just decided to give up. Ah, they just give you money for like whatever. Or, Thanks, Phil. Don't you have a fucking business degree, you fucking loser? Because something went wrong. There's no excuse for the fact that they need to be bought out at this point, except they blew it. 
And that's what it sounds like happened to me. Yeah, that's what you fucking want. You want an angel investor. And your pay pigs are exactly that. Because they give you money and they let you do whatever you want. The fact that it's been so many years and we have no idea what their next few games are going to be. We have no announcements, no previews, nothing. Something's Something's up. Something fucked up over there. All right? So, yeah. And the other thing is it's a buyout. It's not like, oh, we took an investment to help. They got bought out completely by a Chinese company. Boy, the one thing that I think about when I think about Quantic Dream Games is China and Chinese culture. It really fits with their game model, doesn't it? See what I'm saying? It like, doesn't seem to make much sense at all. ESP, why do you have to be fucking racist, man? It's business. What if they want a bigger stake in the Western gaming uh, landscape? What? what? Like, this, this, this fucking thing he just said. The thing he just fucking said about China was so profoundly stupid. I'm going to play it again. So, yeah, and the other thing is it's a buyout. It's not like, oh, we took an investment to help. They got bought out completely by a Chinese company. Boy, the one thing that I think about when I think about Quantic Dream Games is China and Chinese culture. It really fits with their game model, doesn't it? See what I'm saying? It like, doesn't seem to make much sense at all. You're like, huh? So, obviously, something's going on. And uh, I don't know. It makes me... It does- it's like they would... Get David Cage and make him make actual, like, Chinese games. That's what this man thinks. They would buy out this Western studio and give him to make uh, Chinese-style, like, martial arts games or whatever he's thinking they're going to make. It's fucking ridiculous, man. They just buy companies all the time because they want a bigger stake in the fucking market share. Those make me a little worried. Because I like Quantic Dream games. Or whatever. All right. I've- At least I'm honest. I don't know shit about this. I just think a little bit, and he just jumps to a conclusion. Money! I enjoy them a lot. They're some of my favorite playthroughs I've done over the years, okay? And it definitely makes me nervous that something's up. What's going on with this company, right? I hope now what doesn't happen is that you bought bought the the devs that have been with the company for ages, say, fuck this, and they leave. Because that happens sometimes. You get bought out, like, oh, I'm not dealing with that. I was working for this company under the premise, this is how we operate. I have creative control. Someone else just bought us out. Fuck this. I'm out of here. You might see an exodus from the company, and that won't be good. So I guess we're going to see what happens. Okay? Now, following along with exactly the same plot line, I don't know what happened. Hey, big ol' Pastor Miller. Pastor Miller is in chat. Uh, Throw up some prayer hands. Come on. Let's let's channel some uh, positive energy. As well as Sony Interactive Entertainment, I think we know who Sony is. All right. Have each collectively acquired, th- well, not each, but let's let's say this together. They collectively acquired okay. 30.34% of From Software, with Sony getting 14.1%, and I guess it was Tencent got like 16%. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Uh, that ain't bad. Okay. I don't know. What that means is they bought. A chunk of the company. Yes. A part investor, which means they're going to make... Yeah, you literally fucking read the headline, DSP. Part of the profits of the games that FromSoft comes out with in the future. And how does FromSoft benefit? They get money right now. Money, To invest into new course. projects. We've already had money. word that FromSoft's next game is essentially <laughs> You're just dumb. like... This is like young, yeah. But um, instead of him, it's just a homeless dude who knows nothing about anything. And almost ready for release. They haven't even announced it yet. And it's almost done and ready. And then they're already working on the next project. So what this sounds to me like is what they want to do is be able to be a robust game studio juggling tons of projects at once. They want to be a robust studio. Yeah, they just made one of the most successful video games. If not the most successful, I don't know how it is, but one of the most successful video games of all time. I'm sure they would want to grow as a studio and work on a lot more projects that are going to be also successful and make them a lot of money and glory. Other games. I'm sure they want to do that, DSP. Thanks for the coverage. Studios. Right now, FromSoft has very much been a studio that can really only juggle one game, maybe one and a half. And the reason I say that is... How do you juggle is, one thing? They were you on just Blood throw War, it up. They had another team working on Dark Souls 2. <laughs> you just throw and, and catch. That That's how you out. juggle. Everyone kind of criticizes Dark Souls 2, saying it's not the best in the franchise. Some people say it's actually the worst. <clears throat> Yeah, some people say a so lot of stuff on Twitter. what they're trying to actually do Don't is go there. reinvest it's in the scary. company by taking on these investments from these outsider companies to expand, to have more dedicated dev teams that doesn't feel like it's outsourcing, but instead it's in-house, but they can do more projects at once. You know what I mean? Um, I guess we'll see, but 
hopefully, this is good news. Being that this is only partial investment as opposed to, oh, we bought you out and we have control over your company now. This is a different kind of deal than the Quantic Dream announcement, you see? So, this is good, in my opinion. I hope that something better comes out of this, all right? Okay, another announcement. The lead game dev, Tony... I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm just going to say H. Tony H., who is Tony the H. lead game dev of both <laughs> He's going to dox him. <laughs> ...has posted up this morning, <laughs> hinting that something is coming tomorrow for the game, but didn't explain what. And they're kind of keeping it under wraps as if they have a surprise announcement for tomorrow. Now, for those following along Multiverse... Tony H., yeah, it's Tony Hawk. Weeks ago, <laughs> I don't know how to say his content. name. It, it might be a slur. Morty. And a couple rebalances, and that's it. We were promised a lot of other things. For example, a cooperative story-based arcade mode where you can go through 2v2 fights, keeping up with someone else online, possibly earning in-game rewards. There's also ranked matches, which is supposed to be a mode where you get ranking points for wins and losses, and therefore people can see who's the best on the internet. So it's kind of weird because we've had all those things teased and not a hint at what it's coming out. Perhaps tomorrow we're actually going to get definitive information on when that stuff will be hitting the game. <clears throat> Or maybe they're going to give, you know, Wonder Woman a seventh skin or something. I don't know. Who knows? All right. So it's a, right. it's a well, non-news. Guys, I've kind of been beating around the bush. I think we all know. Wait, what? Where I'm going with today's podcast. You, you know what I got to talk about? All right? <laughs> what? I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it again today. It's time. Are we going to be? finally bake? time to address it. The Last of Us 1. Oh, part no, one, no, 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 no. Re-release. Re. Because Re. that's exactly what it is. It's the third release of the same exact game. I'm sick. Has had its early reviews come out this morning. Okay. The early reviews from the mainstream media are insanely praising. 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 9 out okay, of 10. Okay, if, if anything, this is going to be somewhat of, a, of an entertaining segment. So let's just sit through it. 9.5 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10, which is like the low ball score. Okay? Now, here's the thing. I uh, I have no problem with that. Want to know why? Because The Last of Us 1 was my game of the year of 2013, nine years ago. It absolutely, in my opinion, was the standout best game of 2013. It was the best in class game I'd ever seen on the PlayStation 3, pumping out revolutionary graphics, cool gameplay elements, an insanely good story. Great character what are the cool gameplay music, elements? Music, voice acting. Like, it hit Third every cylinder possible action. that you're looking for in a beautifully crafted engine that is a game was pumping at full octane, all right? Really? It blew me away <laughs> when I played it. It absolutely did. And to this day, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, by the way, you know, this is a situation where the game should not be purchased or, or played or experienced, and it sucks. That's That would be the worst thing you could possibly do. That's being so disingenuous, Okay. This game is amazing. I always thought it was amazing. I, you know, nine years ago, I thought it was amazing. Today, I still think the game's amazing. So fair enough for these review scores, all right? However, as I knew was going to happen, these reviewers are completely ignoring the actual issue with the game, which isn't the, the game. The pricing. It's the price. Yeah. They're all arguing in their reviews, this is not a cash grab. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many reviews actually have that phrase in the review this is not a cash grab okay <clears throat> what other phrases do they have though to actually review the game and explain to you what is good and what is bad okay the dude just looks at one thing and is like dude they're so fucking shitty problem with that statement is these people don't even understand what the term cash grab means they're just blindly defending this game all right we talked about this at length that when Last of Us 2 came out, Neil Druckmann made it a social justice oh, no. movement to buy his game. If you oh, buy no. The Last of Us uh, 2, excuse me, you are sticking it to those bigoted haters on the internet. You're telling them this oh, is a God. new progressive gaming landscape. He's had like at least six segments exactly like this like exactly like this like actually exactly like this sure. this might even be that segment i might just have played some random clip non stereotypical characters can be heroes where girls can be strong and tough where girls can actually be homosexual and that's okay it's not looked <laughs> frowned upon and you're really going against that mis misogynistic 
gaming community out there if you buy The Last of Us 2. I'm not making this up. That's what he said. He outright said that on the internet. Every time you buy The Last of Us 2, you're sticking it to the haters. He said that. And yeah, he... and you said every time you put on the fucking vest, you're sticking it to the trolls. You do exact that exact same shit, DSP. That vest that you said was a symbol of your perseverance in your fucking community, that's the same shit. It's the same shit. You're a hypocrite, DSP. What he did is he created this, this cult, this progressive cult, this cult. of people. And by the way, this guy who's talking about a cult today was like, let's get back to the pattern of good support. Let's get back to the pattern. On the internet, that thing. Dude want to get people in patterns. That anything they what buy is that? now from him is supporting this social justice movement. All right? I don't like that. For me, I want a game to succeed on its own merits. All right? And by the way, The Last of Us 1 has a ton of great merits. But when you see every mainstream review site reviewing this game, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, and they okay. say in their reviews it's, number, it's not a cash grab because the graphics blow you away and this and that. But literally no one addresses the fact that it's $70. What that tells me is they've they're part of the they're part of the group. And they don't care. As long as they can push that fucking agenda down your throat. I wonder if if he actually read a bunch of reviews or he's just read somebody's tweet who said that they don't mention the pricing. Give a fuck. And that's disingenuous to me. You're right? disingenuous. Here's how I'm going to approach it. How are you going right? to approach it? He's not going to fucking play it until somebody buys it for him. That's how he's going to fucking approach it. Like everything else. If somebody buys it and says, Phil, here's the 70 fucking dollars, play the game, he's going to play it. I'm going to tell you from the reviews I've seen what's really great about the game. I'm going to give you my honest take on why I'm not playing it. And then I'm going to give you an overall kind of, I hope will be considered middle of the road take. Because I'll tell you what? one thing. I'm certainly not conservative and I'm certainly not ultra progressive liberal. Oh I, my God. Oh my God. Kind of and I try to see this from all perspectives. Problem is when I do that, I get hated on by everyone. But the, the, we're talking about The Last of Us 1. There was no political alignment behind that game. And we're talking about a remake of that game. Right? Right. Where the pricing is an issue. Why do we have to talk politics? What what sense does it make? This is not The Last of Us 2. It's done. It's gone. Let it fucking stay wherever it is. Conservatives hate my ass and the liberals hate my ass because I'm neither. No, because generally people just hate your ass because your ass is hateable. So I'm kind of like the most hated guy on the internet when it comes to issues like this because everyone's like, well, if you're not with us, you're... Because you have shit takes, DSP. ...against us. Well, I'm not with either of you. So I guess you're all against me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about this. First of all, the number one huge win is that all the accessibility features oh from The Last God. of Us 2 are now in <laughs> yeah, The Last true. of Us Yeah, that's true. It's a good win. Big ups. Or the la excuse me, The Last of Us Part 1. No. I'm just calling it the re-re-release. I'm sorry. It's the only way to not get confused about the fucking title. How are you game. getting confused? It's not fucking confusing at all. all right. It's not confusing at all. You had uh, plenty of time to get used to it. So all of the accessibility features, including... They announced it like a million Sona. years ago. That was hey, big up Black Mage for uh, nine months, dude. That's a lot. To lead you around in life and centrist. Um, Trademark. You're excited, the, oh, oh, the contrast features. The menu narration. All new. Also, apparently this game has new accessibility features. Apparently Whoa. it has actual attempts. It's going to make dead people play it. Narrate the game. Meaning there is an actual person <laughs> voice narrating things in the game. Oh, it's like the Netflix. Blind or sight impaired, I love watching stuff like that in the background. Tommy walks in with the gun. No, don't shoot me. Tommy shoots her. Can't see. She the, falls on the floor and dies. There's a voice going on, which is exactly what happens with television shows and movies today. So they actually tried to add in an accessibility feature that's becoming more prominent in other realms of media into a video game for the first time. That is unprecedented and that is super positive. They've also tried to implement new accessibility features for those who can't hear. Now, if you're deaf... You can enjoy all the visuals of a game, but you have no idea what any of it sounds like. They implemented a feature. Like haptic feedback? Where, hold on, because I have the controller right here. I don't know why I don't just show the real controller. Okay. Utilizing. Hey, at least keep bothered. rumbling feature of this DualSense controller, which is revolutionary. I've told you guys if I play games such as uh, Bug Snacks, that I felt 
really cool features like thunder rumbling and it feels like it's actually thunder in the background and stuff like that. So apparently, when you're playing The Last of Us re-release, re okay. all right, there will, there's a feature that makes it so that this controller will vibrate along with the voices in the game. Okay. That is pretty dope. Resonating at different levels of vibration to try to match the actual tone of their voice. So imagine you've never heard anyone speak in a video game before, but you can kind of get how someone sounds because your controller is rumbling like their voice. Okay. That is pretty cool. This feature actually blows me away just as much as the sonar in Last of Us 2. Why the fuck does it blow you away, DSP? Do you not know what kind of shit exists out there in the world? The answer is no. He doesn't know because he doesn't Rage know anything. Feels good. But yeah, it's not like blowing you away, but it, it is an impressive feature. Good job. That's why the game costs so much. That's an ingenious fucking feature. Now, I don't know how it works. Personally, I'm probably never going to use it and I would probably not benefit from it because I can actually hear the real voice. But you can that test sounds it out, amazing. Though. And you're also not going to play the game. So, yeah. That's like cool. <laughs> he said he's not going to play it. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I can't say a negative thing about it. That's ingenious. They must have some really smart fucking people working on this shit. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, that's, that's crazy cool. And I'm happy that there is a AAA game studio out there that actually cares about accessibility for games in this manner. And they are breaking new ground as much as they can. This is excellent news. I want every major AAA release to have these kind of groundbreaking features because games should be accessible to all in my opinion okay you can all disagree right. a lot of people are like well, what do you mean you can disagree what is disagreeing is saying no i don't want disabled people to be able to play games video games are only for the fully abled i don't care about accessibility what is fucking you can disagree no you, you can't disagree video games should be for everybody Everybody should have an equal chance to play them. Come on, it's video games, it's fun. Features, fair enough. If it doesn't affect you, it doesn't affect you. You can but disagree. this game has, from reports and reviews, the best, accessibility, eh, the best accessibility features ever in any AAA video game, surpassing The Last of Us 2. And this has to be a major focus and a major emphasis that this is awesome that they're doing this, okay? This is a, definitely a step in the right direction. All right, DSP. Yeah, but this is not a big selling point for a major amount of the people that are interested in this game. So that $70, they're not really going to care that the game is accessible for other people when they're paying that $70. No one should be excluded from enjoying great games. Okay, okay. What long. else? What else? Okay. And he got to put it back. Got to come back. What is this? This looks like a One heavy metal shirt. Like what is this shirt? Is give a shout out, of course, to my long time. Oh, uh, super blind man. And friend. I consider him a friend. Super blind man. Why do you consider uh, him a friend? Because he gives you money. And does stuff for you and, and tells you he likes you. Who's been working? Consider him a fucking friend. <laughs> incredibly hard. <laughs> on blind accessibility for games the last few years. This is a game that he worked on directly, okay? And he actually gets a shout out in the credits for it, which is awesome. He has a full accessibility review, mostly for the blind side of things, but also for, for other the blind as well. side of things. Up, he posted up as a blog. <laughs> he actually today the is the blind side of things. Is this like a a blog? It's called the blind side of things. Streaming this game. He's got an early copy from Sony and he's going to be playing it on his his twitch channel so i strongly yo. recommend if you're interested in the accessibility yo this is what's the reason he's giving him such a massive fucking shout out dsp never tells people to go watch somebody else dsp is the last guy to tell you go watch somebody else the dude can't even name drop youtube videos that he watches because he's insecure that you're gonna go watch those people but now we're gonna send to super blind man because he's blind and he uh, gave dsp money and and you know visually impaired features of the last of us re remake no excuse me re re release even i can't remember my own name for it it's so complicated yeah because um, you made it complicated by giving it a SPM new name is a friend because he has more clout than pig uh that is pretty accurate yeah that's more, more clout <laughs> yeah he, he probably does have a much better standing than dsp in his community but uh, let's go back on this uh, DSP not being able to catch up with his own nicknames for games. Yeah, you made the, the name. You called it the re-remake. It's called Part 1. Just call it Part 1. Go check him out, all right? Super Blind Man. There you go. 
Okay. <clears throat> now, let us continue because there's a lot more to unpack here. All right. As you read through the reviews of this game, here's what you're going to find out. It's essentially exactly the same gameplay. Unless you're using the accessibility features, it's 99% the same. The one thing they really changed was the weapon mod bench, where now there's more weapon mods in the game. But if everything else is the same, including the enemies, why do you need more weapon mods? Don't know, but it's, they, they, they changed the weapon mods, okay? Outside of that, essentially the exact same gameplay, the same story, the same voice acting, the same music, the same levels. Do you get the point that I'm kind of making here? It's the same game, except for the graphics. The graphics are what are blowing people away. Now, I haven't played it, so I can't speak to the graphics. What I can tell you is from my experience of people showing the side-by-side -side comparisons of The Last of Us 1 Remake on the PS4 and this Last of Us 1 re-re-release on the PS5, I can't tell the difference. I mean it. Like, they'll show, here you go, here's a, here's a screen wipe. Whoop! And I look and I'm like, okay, they definitely look different, but all you did is you changed some detail on the character model. I couldn't even subjectively tell you which I like better. They kind of both look fine. I actually, I actually agree with him on this. I saw some, like, side-by-sides today, and I saw some gameplay, I think of uh, the part one, and I kind of thought it was kind of the same, man. Like, oh, here's the old Ellie model, here's the new Ellie model, okay? As they in, I wouldn't pay good. money for it. They're both passable, you changed her facial structure a little bit. Just because you changed someone's facial structure doesn't mean you improved it, it just looks different, right? This would be like, I don't know, taking no, any don't, care? Don't, no, 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 we don't need those. Like, when you explain your point, Unless you are actually talking to, like, animals or something. I don't know who you need to be talking to. Children or, like, really dumb kids. You don't need to give constant analogies that repeat your point. Because you just run yourself in fucking circles. Character that you know. What's a character that you know and love from a video game franchise? And now we're thinking about characters that we know and love from video game franchises. Now we're completely lost in the sauce. Nathan Drake. And they say, oh, look, it's it's fucking Uncharted re-re-re-release. Here's a screen wipe. Whoop! And his nose changes shape. Okay? No, they changed more than that. And Come on. Come is on. it a big deal? And, and that's how they're all acting. Like, they're literally acting like these new character models look better. And I'm like, they don't. They look different. But I couldn't argue that they look better. All well, you did is change the, the shape of their face. They, they objectively have more pixels on them, so they're higher definition so objectively they are better like technically okay on a technical level they are better do you want it explained to you like this so you can admit ace or a little bit of shape of their body no it's the same mocap so the but dsp needs to validate it for it to be actually better character hasn't changed just a little bit of their physical of course. appearance right who cares who cares honestly i don't that's not a reason for what me what about the the people that never played the first game because it looks too old like the some of the normie gamers, people like me, that uh, of course I played the first game, played the remastered too. But what if some some random dude just bought a PS5 and he's like, okay, what can I play on this? Damn, this game came out. It's a classic. It's a remake. Okay, let's go. And that's it. If you haven't played it, it's probably worth picking up because it's on next gen. It looks all nice and clean, and it's the same game as before. That's it. Need to rebuy a game seriously. Um, Plus, the remaster doesn't really look all that better compared to the original one, so you might as well just pick up the, the remake. Definitely the lighting is better. Yes. Okay. Last time I checked, I don't buy games for lighting, you know? There's, but light... Oh, my God. But it's the same dude that says, dude, first of all, the graphics are great. Yeah, the lighting is a part of, quote-unquote, the graphics. When there's nice graphical improvements in lighting in games, I've oh actually my God, mentioned man. in the last couple of years. There's been a couple of games where the lighting looks pretty exceptionally good, and I'll, I'll call it out. It's like this this dude's coverage of games is is even worse than coverage of his own fucking drama, because he's like more ignorant and he just has worse takes than literally just begging and talking about bad things happening to him. Crazy, but for the most part, why would I go crazy over that? And it's hilarious because they're all arguing in the reviews, this looks so good. And then you watch the footage that's on the internet, you're like, it, what's so good? 
And again, maybe it's me. This is my subjective take. Maybe you can completely disagree with me. But I played the remake on PS4. I'm looking at the footage of PS5 and I'm like, I don't get it. I, I really don't understand it. What's the big deal about making it look slightly different? Some people are actually arguing that the, some of it's worse. I'm not going to say that because I haven't seen a single scene where that looks worse. I would say, okay, it's a minor improvement or I can't tell. But I've never seen, oh, wow, that looks way worse in the the new version. I wouldn't say that. I think I the think lady that kind of you kind of walk now. around in the beginning, I think uh, she looks kind of worse. The major selling point for the vast majority of people out there is a graphical overhaul that's not really much of an overhaul at all. It just makes it look slightly better or slightly different. That's a hard sell for me. All right. Now. I want to do an experiment on the stream today. We have over 300 people currently on the on the podcast live. Okay, I'm we can do, do an experiment in the chat, live. of our I own. I want your feedback, everyone. Okay. I let you feedback, everyone. Here we go. And then he slaps his microphone, like he a pimp. Have you played The Last of Us? Did it even come out in any form before? Oh, okay. Yes. No. Yes. No. Let's do our I'm own poll. I'm purposely not going to give you any context. I just would like to get your honest answer. Out of the 300 and some people on the stream right now, how many have actually played Last of Us 1 before and how many have never played it before? So please feel free to vote. And I, I'm very curious to see the results. I'm not going to give you uh, an explanation of why I'm polling that yet. I will in a moment. But I wanted to get why? some because honest feedback from Why? Because you're fucking first. basic, DSP. Okay. His point is going to be the point that I made fucking five minutes ago, that people who haven't played it are going to pick it up because it looks good. All right. So continuing on. With my analysis of this game and the early analysis, years. analysis, man, he calls this shit analysis. His subjective opinion that he just said it was his sub subjective fucking opinion. Essentially, what, what a everyone fucking who's joke. reviewing the game is saying is this is the best version of the game, and if you want to play the game today in 2022, all right, you should get it on PS5, and this is the version you should buy and play. Okay. Are they wrong? One thing that I have seen some people address, but seem to gloss over, is the shocking lack of the multiplayer. All right, it has to be addressed. The original Last of Us 1 had a multiplayer mode. What was it called? Factions, I think it was called, or something like that. And I remember when I played the game back in the day, I was actually blown away because it was something completely different from any multiplayer I had ever played. It wasn't about run and gun, third person cover like, like Gears of War. Instead, it was all about stealth. It was about being incredibly sneaky, trying to get behind and circling around the enemies, kind of doubling back or sometimes flanking them and teaming up. Maybe one person would be a distraction, so you could run up behind and take the other two out from behind. They're it probably going to end up really making it a separate unique. game that's going to be free. That it's like Warzone it. like, it or something. something that I was gonna You're going to make like a, a bajillion dollars. Absolutely blown away that it was something they tried that was different. A lot of people really liked the multiplayer of The Last of Us 1. Honestly, it was a shame I felt they never went further with it. They never really had expansions for it. They didn't add significant new maps or gameplay elements. Maybe it didn't have a player base that was viable. Entirely, come to find out, they're making a whole standalone maybe, game. Maybe it didn't get support. Aim of it. Huh? So obviously you're acknowledging it's good, right? You're acknowledging it was good or else you wouldn't be making a whole standalone okay. game of it that you're going to sell as a separate game. What if they have All a right? different business plan so for that? So that being said... Shout How out that being said, argue call in show tomorrow, game, make sure you call in. 2022 is the best version of The Last of Us 1 when it's missing a whole game mode. It's literally missing the game mode that was in this game in 2013. And I haven't heard Naughty Dog justify once why, right? Why is it not in it? Uh, because they're working on a new one. Like, that's the justification. Like, what? Because they just didn't feel like fucking putting any effort into putting it in there. That's this. Is that what came across to you? The only explanation. They just they wanted to work on a new one. Okay. That's gonna sell as a full game. Yes. If they gave you the old one in this remake, re-release, whatever you want to call it, then they would say, "Oh, that's gonna take the focus away from the new game we're making and take you know, oh, we won't make as much money." Oh so my god. So we're not gonna put that multiplayer into this new one. Maybe need some more work, some more balancing. Maybe they want to put some more game modes in. But no, it's money, dude. People are just fucking lazy. Everybody is lazy, incompetent, and they want money constantly. And DSP um, is not like that. Because I say so. And he says so. 
the, I have not seen a single reviewer justify the, the missing multiplayer. They just say, oh, it's not a big deal. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. People bought The Last of Us 1 in 2013 as a new release. They got a full-fledged story and campaign that's identical to the one you're going to get in this re-re-release with less graphics, okay? And not no accessibility features and, and lower graphics. But they also got a whole other game, a whole other mode for the same price. Oh, wait a minute. For cheaper, for 60 bucks. You can't justify that this game doesn't have the multiplayer, yet they're acting like it's a brand new full-fledged game. There's no justification for it. And I haven't seen a single person even bother. As I said, it's almost like there's this cult that because they know... Oh, well, you got to trust Druckmann. Here's why. He's, he's pushing this new progressive agenda we all like. <laughs> what? 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 We want to see better representation in games. We want to see games with more accessibility How features. How is this about we a cult? We want to see these things make progress in games. My so God. forget the fact that this guy's making a shitload of money on this. Forget the fact that, you know. Somebody stop we're him. We're giving him of all these things that normally we'd be critical of. Wow. As long as he can get this agenda pushed, we're okay with it, right? What? You know, what? Forget, forget all that shit. What? Fuck. He can get away with it. No one else can get away with it, though. If anyone else tried to do that, we would slam them, destroy them, review bomb them. But because it's Druckmann, and because he's pushing the agenda we like, we're all doing the, oh, the hero do-gooder shit, the social justice what? shit. It's okay. Just forgive him. He doesn't need to have, oh, multi what multiplayer? I don't remember any multiplayer. Yo, give me a life. fucking break with this narrative. Give me a fucking break. Who, who are you talking about? That never existed. By the way, buy the new full-fledged multiplayer game he's coming out with in a year or two. But we don't need it now. DSP, who fucking told you that that game is going to be full price? I mean, it might be, but what it seems to me is that it's going to be very cheap. It's going to be like the Red Dead Online thing that they didn't really maintain, but it's going to be pretty cheap, probably like 15 bucks, maybe 10, and people are going to go crazy. They're going to put a bunch of skins, and it's going to be the next Warzone. And that's a success, because people are going to enjoy that, and they're going to make a ton of fucking money. So... That's a major criticism I have of this game for sure. And most of these mainstream reviewers are literally ignoring the issue or glossing over it, saying it's not a big deal. No, it is. It's a whole other fucking part of the game that's not in there, yet you're charging it as if it's the same game. It's not. You're ripping people off. Now, let's take a look at the initial results of the poll that I ran. Here's the poll. The poll. 58% of people... On this stream right now, Yo, this is crazy. have already played The Last of Us. We have the opposite. Forty-two percent have not. We have exactly the opposite. Okay. Forty-two so, and fifty-eight. Yeah, look at this. Same thing. There you go. There you have it. Here's my take on that. I'm glad that I did this poll initially here. Here's my take. Okay, on I'm gonna that. close it. It's exactly the same. The, the, the trolls are literally right now, the opposite. That means less than half of you, all right, would actually get what we've considered full game value out of The Last of Us re-re-release. Because if you've already played the game, like the 58% of us have, all right, you know the story, you know the characters, you know the voice acting, you know the music, you know the gameplay, you know the maps, you know everything. You're not going to be surprised or shocked. They didn't change anything what about it. I played it, it a long right? time ago, if I don't remember anything. If you buy this game for $70, you're paying remember for accessibility the PlayStation features 3? that the vast majority of us are never going to use and a minor graphical overhaul. That's a $70 value, according to Naughty Dog. That's what they're trying to push here, you see? Now, if you are one of the 43% who've never experienced this game, maybe you can justifiably say it's worth the price tag. Listen, it's a full-fledged game. It was game of the year nine years ago. People to this day love this game. I will tell you right now, the plot of The Last of Us 1 is about four times better than the plot of The Last of Us 2. It feels like it's written by a completely different team of people because it actually has this, this really care and attention with how the characters are treated and developed. It, it actually shows evolution in these characters over time. It's remarkable how different the game is from The Last of Us 2, where it's all retconned and everyone's an immature moron making dumb, boneheaded decisions in an apocalyptic setting. It's completely different, okay? I love this game. I still do to this day, all right? But I'm here to tell you, I'm one of the 57%, now that the poll changed, I'm one of the 57% of people who've already played it, not once, but twice, do I see value in buying it a third time for minor graphical overhauls? No, I don't. And I've explained to you guys, listen, it comes out in a couple days, right? It comes out Friday. If someone were willing 
to donate. Oh, we got into it. DSP literally says he wants lower taxes and larger government. He isn't hated for being a moderate. He's hated for knowing nothing while being smug. The same thing he's been hated on since the dawn of time. They always hated him on for this. Because he just talks out of his ass for for no reason. He just brings it up and talks out of his ass because he has an opinion. This to me. And, say, and now we're... I uh, don't. Uh, big ups, Ludwig, for the super chat, dude. Big ups. And uh, I've explained now you. let's uh, get into the actual bag. You guys, listen. It comes out in a couple days, right? It comes out Friday. If someone were willing to donate this to me and say, Phil... Here's the game. Play it. I'd say, okay, let's play it. And then we can directly see how the graphics yeah, would Yeah, of happen. course. If but somebody's of gonna that, donate. I'm not paying $70 for this. I'm sorry. It's not worth it. But it would still be tip money. It would still be somebody donating it. It still tips. It's the same shit. In my, in my subjective opinion, uh... this is not worth it because I've already played it. This is the equivalent of you reselling me a classic game for full price yeah he played it like twice didn't he play the remaster as well and and oh you know yeah i don't expect you to fucking play it you play everything several times take a look at other re-releases do they charge for, I'm, I'm playing destroy all humans 2 repro 40 bucks not 70 40 dollars right i just played pac-man world repack shit that game was overpriced 30 dollars for a six hour experience but it was 30 bucks it wasn't a full price game this is literally the only game out there that has the audacity the balls to ask their audience for a full 70 dollar price tag as if this was a game developed from the ground up as a new game when the vast majority of assets in this game already exist now i'm not here to argue that they didn't do a lot of work on the game if you look at the accessibility side of things dsp you've been arguing that for the last 10 minutes and all of us would listening to it Come on, we know you're here to fucking argue. And you want to pad it out with, in the beginning, you say it's your subjective opinion and you can disagree. And then you say a bunch of stupid shit. And then you end it up and you wrap it up by saying it's your opinion and you can disagree. What has been explained by people like Steve Saylor on the internet is that for the accessibility features of The Last of Us 2 to work in one, they did have to retool a lot of the game from the ground up. That is greatly appreciated. That is for a small audience. That is for the people who are going to use those features. And I appreciate they're in there, but most people will not take advantage of those. You're still charging them the same 70 bucks as everyone else. The other problem that I have with this is that they just released two years ago The Last of Us 2 for $60. The Last of Us 2 had the accessibility features in it already and charged 60 you see what I'm saying? The Last of Us 2 was a new game with a new plot. How new many character. times are you going to make the same point? How There's many times? New gameplay. Over and over again. I'm fucking it's skipping this, man. Absolute definition. Textbook definition of a cash grab. Progressive agenda, social justice. Oh my fucking God. What reviewers say. They're wrong. They are objectively wrong wrong they're objectively wrong by the way this is my subjective opinion and you can disagree you can't charge that much for this game and say it's not taking advantage of your customer base it is i'm making bucks on this i'm doing the right thing and i'm helping games move in the right direction more power to that situation is re-releasing a game right so right. unless you want to see all right. efforts go towards oh quick rehash again oh my god accessibility feature I'm sorry, it just, you can't... Oh my god, no, it keeps going. Please take a sip and get fucking Druckmann out of your balding fucking head, please. Expand Dong says just a few years ago, they gave you the Crash Trilogy or Spyro Trilogy remakes for 40 bucks each. Where'd they go so, or where did we all go so wrong? I don't Anyone know, dude. do no wrong. This one, part one for PS5. What uh, is this? Oh yeah, I really trust these fucks. What is this? There's no justification for it. <clears throat> He's okay. shitting on somebody. He was really right. smug about so, it. Like, really smug about it. Let's see what that's it That's really what I have to say about it. There's also one hilarious thing I got oh, yeah. before we adjourn this discussion. Oh, I, yeah. Before we adjourn this discussion. I laughed so hard when I read it. Games Radar. Oh, Games yeah. Radar. I really trust these fucks. These fucks. More than DSP. More than DSP. Any day. Here's here's the, the summary of their review, straight off of their review. With The Last of Us one, Part 1 for PS5... Naughty Dog has delivered a remake of exceptional craftsmanship 
and creative restraint. Creative restraint. They're praising. <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty stupid line. The fact that you're buying the same game for $70. They're praising it. Uh, no, I think the point was that they maintained the original atmosphere and art style and stuff, and not just, you know. That was an act of restraint. Because it's a it's a remake of a game, right? People want to play the remade game and not something that has been changed through a lot of creative decisions. You know, that's I think that's kind of the point. Uh, at face value, if you're DSP, if you don't think about it at all, it it does sound like that, like they're praising that they didn't do anything. But it's a remake of a thing that already came out, and people want to play that thing, but remade, you know? That's what remake means. I don't, I'm not going to remake a song and add a bunch of fucking drums and 808s and, uh, I don't know, a Lil Piggy feature and a Kanye feature. Because they could have... not going to remake Bohe... ...changed something and improved it, but they didn't to retain the original artistic vision of the game. Yes. It was an act of actual physical restraint. They had to hold back from not pulling a George Lucas on this one. Yeah. Wow. Journalism in 2020, it's okay to pay more for the same. All right, DSP. Fucking jackasses. I just can't take that shit. <laughs> and he's going to swing into begging right okay. now. Okay. Anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I vented my frustrations. I vented my frustrations. That's what it was all about. Him fucking venting. That's why he talked about this for, I don't even know how long. Like, probably 20 minutes. 25 minutes. Maybe even 40 minutes. I don't it's know. It's now time. It was just endless, and it was the same thing over and over and over and over again. To do shoutouts. And shoutouts. Let's see who gets <laughs> to go first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We start off today with Monk, who did a two-pound super chat. Says, Big Ups Phil, cannot wait for you to play Saints Row. There will be more Saints Row coming this Friday. For your votes, it is Destroy All Humans. The Last of Us will be free later. Just watch. I think what he's saying is it'll probably be on these on-demand systems. Like, you know, PS Plus Premium. Yeah, stuff, you love them. Maybe. But they're definitely going to make their cash grab money now. They absolutely are. Of course you they know? will. And man, is it, isn't it it just dis... Isn't it... It's fortuitous for them that there's been absolutely no AAA releases all summer. It really is. It's been, it's been fortuitous for them. There's fortuitous? Been no game from an insanely big game studio that's come out and blown people away. It's been now fortuitous for these sires that there were no game releases this summer. Saving something. And people are going to buy this shit because <laughs> there's nothing going on. Right? Uh, eloquent side And then Jared Walsh also did a super chat. His IGN gave The Last of Us on PS5 and 9. No, then they all did. I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. If you look at all the reviews... Oh my god, look at all fucking shields. Nines or tens. Which, again, I have a hard time fighting because the game was my favorite game of time. I don't care, so DSP. You said this 20, already. It's still going to be an outstanding game. <clears throat> you see? Okay. It's high school level humor. Don't be a prude. I'm not offended. If I was offended, I wouldn't keep playing the game. I'm just cringing like crazy because I don't like it. It's like, for example, let's say you're watching a TV show. Right? And it's the first five minutes, it's promising, but then literally everything after that is like, oh God, this character is boring and sucks. This character is stupid and sucks. This character like just wants to stop life. doing arm farts like this every time they're on the screen. Like the level <laughs> one podcast. <laughs> like, this dude burps into the microphone, by the way, and beats the burp out of his chest, like physically, like an actual baby. This is the writing in the show. Like, actually, it? actually. And he's complaining about stuff like this. Like, DSP, you have zero self-awareness. It's actually the show. You don't even mute your microphone. Oh. You cringe and you change. Not even accidentally. Only when something goes bad and it malfunctions. Change the channel. I can't change the channel. That's the whole game. You see? It's... Yeah, we get it. If you... Listen to this. If you call yourself professional, buy new games that come out. Don't be afraid to bite the bullet. He's not a professional. He burps into the mic, like I just said. That's so not this professional. Guy is and he doesn't show up on time, which is ironic because I didn't show up on time today. This is hilarious. But this is not my job. This guy is criticizing me because I've not bought any new games recently. Oh, look at how fucking salty he gets. <laughs> I'm only playing old games. 
Oh my god, what Ever games am I gonna buy? Fruit, don't take it. Ignore the low hanging fruit. Should I ignore it? Should I just move on? <laughs> I should I do I I mean <laughs> Damn. Hey, you don't was, want me to bite? Pick up was Daniel for picking we're up. Just, that, we're playing should uh, I save it for Sunday night bites? Dude. Take the bait? Right? Oh Ugh. color just changed. Oh, I must have the color correction. I didn't realize that. Um Don't take the bait. Don't do it. Wow. Here we go. Okay, color correction's off. Now I can look human again. Color oh, correction? Man. Was there Don't color the correction? Bait. Don't do it. Wow. Here we go. Okay, color correction's off. Now I can look human again. Uh, oh. you, you don't look human, DSP. Man. Unfortunately. <laughs> Flame him. Flame this man. You told your viewers during August to forego memberships in favor of tipping. You said you had two big bills passing and the trolls screwing with you are also a factor. Uh, Carlos, this guy's going to get dismissed so hard. You have to understand something. That was the first half of the month, and this happened in the last week. Here's typically what happens. This is really what's historically been happening <laughs> here on DSP Gaming. The first week of the month, sometimes we get a big influx of people who become members or renew their memberships or gift. The second and third big. weeks of the month, stagnant. Because we know we're going to get the members event. And at the end of the month, there's a rally. People a rallying because you beg again because they're gonna expire so you beg for members come on a fucking rallying dsp a rallying want to see me hit the goal for the month right people get excited for the goal for the month they want to see it happen and all of a sudden people hey, what's up, right? no, become members up, or gift memberships this is how it's happened it's basically first and last week of the month is where all the membership activity happens middle of the month is always dead okay this month you're absolutely right there was a couple weeks there very tough these me, bizarre rough, patterns with dsp with to even just pay my bills. You guys supported me. Thank you. I got through the month. I really appreciate that. But typically what happens is that last week, okay, now we can rally and we can make this happen. And what happened? Copyright strikes. Uh -oh. And now people are like, well, I don't want to renew. I don't want to gift. Because what if Phil's channel gets suspended? Now I don't get the benefits of my membership. Oh, yeah. All those benefits. Right? So I get that. And that's what I've been saying is that's the effect. I mean, yeah, this is bullshit because we're in a situation where I did nothing wrong. Someone I did nothing wrong. Against me and now I lose income. <laughs> it's bullshit. All right? And we're back now, to this. We started off the podcast with exactly this. Exactly this big. Copy paste. God. There's been nothing further. But I understand what you're saying. But that's kind of like not understanding how it actually works here on the channel. I did I nothing wrong. You. You're absolutely right in what you're saying. But it doesn't really apply. Because what would have happened is we would have had that rally in the last week. And that You're right, but it doesn't apply. That's when this happened to me. Because this is a okay. special month because people fuck with me because trolls. Because I provoked them. I literally asked them to copyright strike me and the madman did. There you go. He literally did. All right. I received a $10.04 tip from Jerry. Hey, stop flexing. 10.04. Stop flexing, Phil. With the four cents, but thank you, <laughs> By the way, I, I love this new thing. I want to get back to the pattern of uh, of this new thing where the pre-stream ends on, on zero dollars. I like this. It's not the case today, but yeah, I think it happened yesterday. It was a lot of fun. It was like zero. <laughs> and he was wondering if the tips were working. We should check out that pre-stream later. Oops. Because he's probably done at this point. Is he on break in the present? No, he's still rambling. What the hell? This is in what? In uh, in six minutes, we're gonna get there. And he says the following. What does uh, he are say? Are you going to play the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yes. And the new Pokemon game? Yes. Are you going to do a video game calendar update for September to December? Uh, Any no. Any sports games that you're going to play this year? Mm, please I no. I address these one by one. No, um, please no. I'm playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game Saturday. It's a marathon. It's the, the Cowabunga Pizza Party. I'm playing it all day. I'm going to go through the history of those games. Okay, we heard about this. The two arcades. We're taking the executive decision to skip ahead. Uh, and then we'll see how much time we have. Because that's a lot of games to get through in one marathon session. There's a Game Boy games. Maybe I'll play a Game Boy game. I never played the Game yeah, Boy game. Yeah, you're a Game Boy. It was a remake last fall. I skipped it so I could play Legends Arceus. Early. I do a schedule on the calendar update for September to December. I haven't done a video game calendar update in years. I never do, do that. Yeah, never do it. It's what? stupid. You give us an update every single day. Do you have to have a separate session where you give us an, an update on the big picture? What I do it makes no sense. Do is I have a podcast. Every once in a while, I'll go through the calendar schedule on the podcast explaining 
what I'm doing. I've actually gone through this several times. Currently, September 5th, Splatoon. Oh, well, he actually did it, bro. He actually did it. He pulled out the calendar and he's reading through it. Wow. Console version. This is madness. Actually, madness. Because some dude sent him, like, what, a super chat or something. Delayed. Callisto Protocol, December 2nd. Dragon Quest Treasures, December <laughs> His uh, his employment history is much shorter than this, and it all ends in fired. At this point, I have no plans on doing that. I'd rather do except this, because he's his own boss. But he's also bankrupt. Other games. <laughs> this get this guy just gets funnier the more you think about him. So no, you can start no from good. the most basic thing you know, and like an iceberg, just descend through the obscure things you know about him, and it gets funnier every single time. Stuff. You can pick it up from anywhere. You can pick it up from Street Fighter 2005 when he was spending money on money matches and was losing all of them, and then you can talk about that. And yeah, it's crazy. Okay. A release date for a new Shovel Knight game is announced. We so, do not care. But I didn't skip, know that skip. there was actually a sequel coming out. Are you seeing that? Skip, skip. Are we. What are we doing? Googling stuff? Can you have a hug? Heatwave Xena? What? Yeah, but not for me. Uh -huh. It's called Shovel Knight Dig. <laughs> what? Yeah, but not for me. Wow. Bro, come on. There's like a million ways you could play this off better than fucking yeah, but not from me. Just like uh, pretend you give him a hug. That's it. Well, that name sucks. Fucking stop being so <laughs> fucking toxic, man. What the hell? It was just like some random DSP chat member. Come on. That name stinks. <laughs> Can I have a hug? Better than that? Just, just say, engage your chat, right? Say, chat, drop a hug emoji for this guy, because he needs a hug, man. Let's do some positive stuff. But he's not fucking positive. But if he needs a hug, everybody needs to drop hug emojis all the time. Constantly, all day long. And he's going to look at chat and be like, Oh, you guys, stop dropping the hug emoji. I'm kind of feeling depressed right now. I might kill myself. I'll put it on the schedule. I'll have to look into it. I'm not going to commit to it until I look into it. I'd yeah, don't commit to it, please. Do it you're you're a very committed person. People criticize. I don't think it's going to be being trash. You like immediate. I don't think it's a big <laughs> It's driving. it's almost method acting. Across the map, you drive into a wall, you stay on the bike like you're glued to it. Was you, the Saints Row? You drive wrong? a car into the side of a truck, the truck flips and explodes. What is this? GTA 6? <laughs> GTA 7? <laughs> GTA 8? So I don't know how you can uh, approve, how you can even defend that. It's a rag, it's, it's a sandbox game without sandbox physics. A rip? That's probably Saints Row. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was one of the best games of the year. A lot of people disagreed with me. I, I loved it. I have a full playthrough of right now on DSP Gaming you can watch. Team, Shout I did, I did a full game. playthrough of Prey 2017. I loved it. Prey 2017, big Pertinent or robust. Hey, the what? The AI is trash. Am I aware of words that I use in high frequency, such as admittedly, pertinence, or robust? Well, admittedly, <laughs> the pertinence of the words that I use over and over could be seen oh, as a no. robust use. <laughs> yes, it's called mannerisms. Oh, it's Everyone called mannerisms. They have dialect mannerisms. Words that you tend to use over and over. No, you're but yours is, is some next level of bullshit. You do it on purpose to sound fancy. Even word dialect that are kind of filler words. Meaning, when you're thinking in your head what you want to say next, you'll use that word as filler to fill time. Yeah, you've so been bring... fucking having podcasts for like 15 years now. Remember, he used to do Hate Live, which is which was a podcast. And what is actually funny about this is when he started doing the pre-stream podcast at first, he was uh, being a little bit... Uh, making a deal out of being new to podcasting and being like, oh, I'm going to figure it out as we go along. Like, dude, you've been doing podcasts. You should have learned how to not sound annoying on the microphone. It's like a rapper that's been rapping for like 20 years and can't rhyme. Bring can process the next statement you want to make. So, so basically Viper. He's the Viper of whatever he does. Hear things said over and over in someone's dialogue. Except Viper makes catchy shit. That maybe is just a, a word that doesn't need to be there, but it's there for a reason to kill time so they can process the next statement. Or else they'd be talking... Just like that. You process stuff like that? You know that people Constantly at business free. meetings don't have filler words like that? Freezing. Actually, they kind of do. But it's more, it's more elegant 
to where it's not really noticeable. And with this guy, it's noticeable enough where people send him a super chat and then tell him, hey, DSP, these things are annoying because you say them a lot. To process the next statement. Yeah, it's literally stalling in language form. It's just meandering. Instead of getting to the point, you're going to fucking bullshit a little bit. Would you rather have silence or would you rather have filler words? No, that's not how it works, DSP. Don't act like you would just sit there silent until you figure out what you're going to say next. Yeah. Okay, then. We prove that point. We slap those knees. Carry on. And robust is also not a filler word. Ow, that hurt. Ow. This this man is is a basket case. <laughs> Why did I do that? And a charity case. Anyway, the bear took me $1.69 and says, There are three games I'm sure your audience would want to see you play, which are Soul Hackers... And Xenoblade 3 or Cult of Lamb. So, Soul Hackers and Xenoblade 3. Lengthy, Japanese-style RPGs that aren't... No. That would take me around 60 to 80. Cult of the Lamb, I have not heard a single Cult of the person Lamb. <clears throat> explain to me why Cult of the Lamb is a must-play game. Because Every you don't follow Theo on Twitter. If you did, then you would see it's a great game. Everyone says, Come on. oh, it's because everyone else is streaming it and playing Everyone it. else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's kind what about the reviews? You can read The Last of Us reviews. You can't read Cult of the Lamb reviews and see what people think. You fucking lame. Kind of like a roguelike, but it kind of has a... Oh, yeah. Look at this. Now the narrative changes. Now we can't even look up reviews. What are people saying, man? Oh, yeah, people are streaming it and saying it's good. A, a, an adult element to it because it's a cult sacrificing things. Like, an adult element. What, it, what is it that I need to play? What am I missing? And no one can explain that. Well, it's, it's nothing. Just... Yeah, you already have a cult. There's nothing for you to learn from this because you already run a fucking cult. That's it. It's just a terrible cult, so you would do bad in the game and you would be salty. Oh, it's just popular. At the one thing that you do. Yeah, because it's a fucking stream popular game. Oh, it's a stream it's a big popular one for the game. Summer. And he's going to play it in like six months when people already, everyone, every single person played it. Even Derek played it and he had his own cult of the, I don't know, some disgusting shit among us like among fall us. guys like fortnite it's it's one of those stream popular games stream it's popular not one that games. you're missing out on if you don't play and it's not something that's going to get new people to my channel it's not something my core fan base is going to fall in love with oh so you're not going to get support just say that so it's about money you see i did the dsp thing oh so it's about money phil Except it is about the money. He just said, there's not going to bring people. It's not going to resonate with his core audience. Therefore, money. <laughs> oh, DSP, you're so lame. Okay. What, what is happening? I, what is, hap what is happening? What is happening? I really don't. <laughs> oh, because are, are people going against him in chat? I don't know, because chat is delayed. Ah, oh, this sucks, man. Maybe I'm a contrarian, right? And I Maybe just you are. I rally against the things that are mainstream popular. I don't know why people would say that because I play a lot of mainstream uh, popular. Because you're stubborn and you're a bitch. And when other people like stuff, it's because they like money. And when you like stuff, it's because you're passionate. The games. That's why. And you say that. There's no, like, arguments that you make. You just say those things and you declare those things. I've been waiting for one, you know, for a long time to come out. And I said, there's been no AAA games the whole summer. Of interest to me but i don't know okay what's on the menu tonight puff mama chili puff mama chili bro what okay <laughs> what's on the menu Are we, uh, what is this this is supposed to be a podcast this is like, you're, you're supposed to listen to this on your way to work or like washing dishes or something. And there's just a dude sitting there being, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> okay. Let's actually produce some content. Come on. Three months. <laughs> no, what no, a no. fucking cloud. I didn't say there was no games. I hate when people misquote me. But you said there's oh, no games. people misquote me. Names. No. I said this has been a summer. Three months. Three months where there's been no high profile AAA style games. Name me one high Name profile it. AAA Name style one. game that's come out. Name three Beatles like songs. Chat. Ever name since, three like, Beatles Summer songs. Fest, right? <clears throat> it's been 
indie game, little re-release. You know what I mean? Mid mid-sized, maybe okay release. There's been nothing amazing. Mid-sized, nothing, maybe oh okay release. Oh my god, you blew my socks off giant game. And because of that, it's been a very slow time. Okay. Next comment you're going to be mad about. That was a SpongeBob quote. What am I eating for? Yeah, nobody that cares, bro. A pork loin roast that is marinated in a carnitas uh -huh. seasoning and sauce. Oh. And you have to slow cook it for hours in a slow cooker with a little bit of uh, water. And what happens is the juices become like a broth. And what happens wow, is after three juicy. four hours, you rip the meat and it just tears apart like pulled pork. Yeah, this sounds and you nice. you that into a taco burrito shell or uh, a fajita, you know, burrito uh, tortilla. That's the word I was looking for. Tortilla. Just, just say something styled bread. Fajita styled bread. You add other things to it. So we're going to have that probably with a little bit of salsa. Maybe I have some jalapenos that I bought. We have a little bit of sauce. You put it on there. And you eat it like that. That's what we're having for dinner. So we never had this before. Obviously, we've done tacos before, but usually it's like ground beef or ground turkey. We've done, <clears throat> excuse me, like chicken, fajitas. We've never done it with actual slow cooker carnitas pork. So we're trying that today. We're going to see how good it is. Hopefully, it's good. <clears throat> there you go. Actual dead air. All right. Actually dead air. We're just sitting here looking at chat. <laughs> the level one podcast. <laughs> what a great show. In, 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 Ooh, do I ever get acid reflux from... And he's yawning into the microphone and talking while yawning. This guy is a legend. Spicy stuff? I do sometimes. It's not all the time, but I do sometimes. It depends. <laughs> Me, it's like he have... just rolled out of bed, and then he yelled at Neil Druckmann for like two hours, and now he's sleepy again. And and he burped himself, so he's ready for bed, guys. The big baby is ready for bed. I understand. I already have issues. With various I, types I, of I already have issues, guys. I'm, uh, what was it, half lactose intolerant and a quarter Polish. So I already have issues. <laughs> I'm, I've... Fortunately, my quarter Italian negates the quarter Polish, so those issues... partial lactose intolerance i have issues with gout so i already have kind of like some food intolerances where i can eat it but then i kind of suffer afterward um so it's not necessarily spiciness that gets me but it's some other things that can get me so was i muted how, how long was i muted for no come on i was saying some fucking banger jokes man that this shit sucks Uh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's the the new you headphones, remember the you guys. Remember the Choco Malos? I remember them. Yeah, they don't exist now. Yeah, they don't exist because they were made by Think Geek and Think Geek went out of business when they were bought out by GameStop and GameStop liquidated their business. How nice, right? Oh, this is great. They're everyone. level one headphones. These are some like uh, call center style headphones because I didn't want to get gaming stuff because that's just a gimmick. And I got some some nice Logitech office headphones that I can actually t take to the office as well. Popular online base and they're not falling apart. So that's a that's a benefit. That's added that value. Geek like pop culture, video game and cool items has been bought by a larger company. This means the best for us. This is excellent. We can't wait to thrive and grow. Oh, we're out of business. They liquidated us and laid everyone off. Oh, no. Just like what happened mm -hmm. to Phil. <laughs> How nice, right? Do I drink coffee only in the morning, but in the evening? I drink one cup of coffee with my breakfast, which I've already had. And I drink one cup of coffee right before my second stream. So I have two cups of coffee a day. And they're okay. black. No sugar, no creamer. Nothing. Just black coffee. Because I drink it not for the flavor, not for the enjoyment, but for the, for the effect. I need that yeah. caffeine boost. That's the same because way he drinks alcohol, too, energy. for the buzz. That's what I drink it for. <clears throat> okay. What else? Why is this a QA? and a It's not even an announced q and it's, it's an unannounced Q&A. It's just random. Random. I'm going to sit here at chat and look at stuff. Because we have no more shout-outs, and I'm bored. Okay, guys. I think it's time to... Uh... To end Adjourn? our little shindig here called the pre the level one podcast. I almost called it the pre-stream podcast. It's just as bad as when I went from Twitch to YouTube and I kept calling it subs. 
and, she, and yeah, uh, I still call it subs. Years. And I never it watched bad. Twitch. Still months later, <laughs> I it watched it like one in a million years. It's the level one podcast. All right, guys, let's end the show. I do have to use the restroom briefly. It won't be a long break. It was a couple minutes. Oh yeah, here. we have this now. This is a this is a new thing where it's just a long break, an actual break. I think it's like it it, it has been between 10 and 15 minutes on on average, I think. So that is a DSP thing that that DSP does. Okay, I'm not going to let you listen to this for some more. Let's check out some more uh dark content. And maybe I can get the music up or something. Let's see what he's been doing throughout this week of uh, interactivity and all these other buzzwords. Oh wow, these views are great. Great. Number one, of course, number one gets the 1k and number three is 577. We all already have over, not over, but about 50% drop. So yeah. Uh... Let's see what this is. Daily wrap, August 29th. What is this? Two point wizardry fun on a hiatus. This is such bizarre titles, man. It's like a an algorithm writes them, but it's a really bad algorithm. It's like DSP wrote it. it has like 20 words in it. Just generates a random title. Hoping for a big win. Oh yeah, this was great. Wait, this was two two days ago. Hoping for a big win, by the way. This is him just actually wishing for somebody to just wail out a bunch of subs. And he was pretty explicit about it. It was kind of funny. Let's see if the transcript is going to agree with me. If it's going to exist at all. And again, this intro is, is just obnoxious. And here, they shouldn't have had this, this colon... That should not be there because it's not correct. My name is what? My name is and then the rest of it is like this green screen footage. I don't know why they use the 2016 DSP green screen footage. This is just so old and outdated at this point. Everybody else has done it and better. And this just like cutting out the green screen and making him just stay there for a little bit. It's, it's very uncreative. And also created by Phil Burnell is... It's a little bit misleading. Hey, here he has a little bit of a color correction, unlike today. Uh, let's uh, see what's going on here, huh? Left of the week. Four more days, guys. Weird. Hoping for some Usually positivity. Six day streaming week. For some surprising positivity. I wonder what that's going to mean. Last week I did a seven day streaming week. Dude, what if something like really surprising happened that would benefit everybody? This week's only five. <laughs> I wonder what that's going to be, man. Yesterday, which is why. <clears throat> but we're going to get to that eventually. excited. For all of that. We're gonna talk no, we're not excited. He looks sleepy as fuck as well. He looks real sleepy, man. Between like, like he's been working all night. Instead, he's been lurking all night. He's been lurking Twitter and drinking, probably. Because <laughs> that's just kind of the, the regular schedule. You know, an attempt to not allow me to react to my... to This is how you don't play. Oh, now, now we regurgitate this whole thing. Solitude, despite the fact that the entire playthrough... Is yeah, playthrough. yeah, we gotta repeat this. It's my content. Is this. Why don't you just do the pre-recorded stuff? You know, this would be such a better idea. Just do the all the pre-recorded stuff the, the same way he does the daily rap. And just play it while the podcast is on. And he can just lean back and play champions the whole time. So good for him. Inserted and he loves things that are good for him. And absolutely despises anything that is mildly not good for him. So that would be a great idea. Effort against DSP Gaming in the last week. <clears throat> I hear you. It could be exhausting. I'm exhausted. I'm going to be honest. You yeah, are I exhausted. Am. You, you exa look exhausted. exhausted with this shit. Okay. You haven't slept well, obviously. Okay. Um, I just wanted to go back to business as usual. Every day, I don't have to turn on my stream and be like, so by the way, guys, at any point today, the stream could disappear because of this false bullshit against me. And if it does, we'll have a backup plan. You know that now, but I don't want it. I hate it. I hate having shit in limbo. You know what I'm saying? I hate uh, having this kind of stuff go on. Okay, we know. We, you talk about it constantly. Not, we, we know you don't like it. This is how I make a... I mean, only thing that matters is the continuation of the business. Not doing the right thing, not doing the legal thing, literally just protecting their own butts. All right? What is this? They can just kind of do whatever they want. Was YouTube? YouTube? Was oh, a... YouTube, yeah. He, he shit talks YouTube in this. Responsible business. <laughs> and I wish YouTube was a professional business. They are neither. All they're right? not anything. Because they're an they're internet based trash. business. They're internet based business. By the way, let's take a quick glance at these comments. Let's see what is up in here. There's no games coming up. Oh, there's some uh, 
Shit, uh, what? Onso Kamaro is apparently upset. Because he's posting some DSP quotes. And he called them seriously stupid. And this comment got approved. Because he's a member, I guess. And he got 21 likes. So DSP is straight up like cucking out against these dudes that obviously diss him. But they're members. So if I wrote this same comment, this exact same comment, let's let's do this. And I'm, I might be banned from the channel. I've never talked in the guy's chat or something. I'm going to copy paste this comment, all right? And maybe I'm going to check it out one of these days. But it's definitely not going to be approved. So yeah, big ups. Because you can sneak diss him because you give him money. And you pretend to like him. Oh, you've been giving him money for quite a, a bit of time. 11 months. Hey, big ups. It's almost a year. So shout out to this dude that can diss Phil. And get approved and get 20 likes. But I can't diss Phil. Because uh, I don't give him money. They feel that they can just kind of do whatever they want as long as it's in their own interest and protects them. Oh, like you. Okay. They're not the only... Sounds like the, the proper place for you there. ...business like that. Twitch is exactly the same. Twitch and is so the are same. And most of these internet-based okay. businesses. Why don't we stream on DSPGaming.com? Why doesn't he stream there? What's the problem with that? Just get some pay pick to set it up. He can stream on his own site. But yeah, the people wouldn't follow him there. There's no discoverability on his own site, right? Uh, he's screwed. There's no memberships. There's nothing. There's no super chats. It's not going to be a super chat. It's going to be like, I don't know, a, a snort chat. Oh, wow. We got to do snort chat. In their mind, <laughs> the only thing that matters is the continuation of the business. Not doing the right thing. Not doing the legal thing literally just protecting their own butts all right so when something negative happens to a content creator priority one is not let's solve the problem let's do the right thing let's fix the issue let's stop the wrongdoing it's let's make sure we're protected first yes absolutely of course that's what they would do of course otherwise everybody can sue them for all kinds of reasons all the time non-stop 24 7. if they were held liable for the content the actual content of the videos that are on this platform, it would be fucked. Has thousands of people. They would have to close down. And don't want that to just go away on a whim because someone committed a crime, right? What about the comments? If people got liable for... If uh, YouTube got liable for comments like this, that would be toxic. Look, this dude is calling him stupid on his own video. And he's a member. I'm still, still not over that. <laughs> I just want you to think about it this way. If you had a brick and mortar business. No, uh, I don't want to think about it this way. How about we don't think about it this way? Right. And then it ends. And then you can go on back to your normal business as usual after a period of harassment. Online, what? there's no. <laughs> These out of context DSP lines are great. Yeah, we continue. All right. Just just start begging. Directly addressing any of it. You don't even bring it up, but it just continues. And now, just because they have a change in attitude or a change in, in priority, they're going to try to destroy you for no reason. And you have no recourse against it. Like, what should happen is, oh, there's trolling activity against the YouTube channel. That channel gets flagged by YouTube that it's under attack, all right? Okay. Now, YouTube should have a contact. Okay, we understand you're under attack right now. If anything you're happens, under you attack contact right this person. Now. <laughs> this is like Game of Thrones. We'll then go to the internal team and we'll discuss what's going on. Bro, they have like so many accounts and so many of them are being flagged constantly and they don't even know how anything works. It's, it's like, it's easy to say how things should be. It's very easy to say. Just like people talk about everything constantly. Just go on Twitter. It's really easy to say stuff like that. And be on your stupid podcast and surrounded by a bunch of toys and rant about how easy things can be it's real easy okay. but he's there sitting not contributing anything to anything getting easier all right more false strikes are hitting uh oh people are hitting me with false Whoa, strikes. this is how things would work in a utopia everyone would be happy and they would kiss constantly because they love each other because they are all equal if, and beautiful and amazing back to you uh with, with the response and some answers from our team it's i haven't heard a word and they go they to him care. Because again, in their mind, as long as they're protected, they, they don't have to do anything. So in their mind, they're following the legal process of how community guideline strikes, you know, copyright strikes are handled. This is their process they've designed and that protects them legally. Their legal team is saying, follow this and we can't get sued, right? So one- All right, DSP, we get it. This was the first like 20 minutes of this, is it? The- Pac-Man World Repack? Oh no, we're talking about Pac-Man.
have a good time with them. And I'm also a variety streamer. I'm not going to sit here and play Cult of the Lamb. Oh, and he, he doesn't want to play Cult of the Lamb. The you should catch a hint. Sometimes that's what he wants people to do. When he implies once that he's not interested in something, you should stop asking, period. Doesn't matter if you were there that day, you should know that Phil has talked about it. We'll continue. So if you support me on this channel and it gets suspended, no big deal. Uh, the, the show will go on. Nothing is going to come to a, you know, oh my God, that's the end of the world. That's just not going to happen. But I think people's... People's mentality a lot of times is I'm making a purchase, even though it's not what you're doing. Oh, he's talking about memberships again. He was making this same, this exact same point in September of last year. Almost a year ago. Actually, uh, today at midnight, which is in two hours, is going to be the anniversary of this channel. Yay! Fun, fun, fun. A year of shitting on Phil. Big when ups. you become a member or you become a sub over on... And he's still the same guy, by the way. Twitch. You're all not that shit later. Keem stars, leaks, champions, all that shit. He's still the same dude. If not worse and more annoying. So shout out to Phil. All you're saying is, hey, I support this content creator. I love the content they put out. I appreciate they do it every day for free. I want to help support them. So I'll actually become a subscriber to this service, whatever it may be, a subscription on Twitch or a membership here on all right. YouTube. That's yes. what you're doing. And for that, you get certain benefits. Now, <clears throat> you get things in return. That's true absolutely but that's supposed to be like the icing on the cake you're already getting you're already getting the content you see you're already getting the awesome content no 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 day you want to no 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 but why are you trying to tell people why they should become a member no some people want to be a member because they like the perks and other people don't care and they just want to be a member it's just fucking different but he's trying to tell you everybody the reason why you should be a member and so it happens the reason is because it's it's easier for him like that if you think about it like that it's easy being a member right now yeah I'm phil doesn't have to do anything he just does his own thing and you just become a member because he does the thing and then the cycle repeats you get some bonus perks well oh, they're my bonus name gets highlighted in the chat oh i get a cool crown next to my name oh I get emotes I get to use. I get priority on special events that Phil runs, etc., etc., etc. Right? That's the millions cool. you of get perks. all of that. You're not purchasing a product. You are not. You're absolutely not. Well, People yeah. have this weird misconception. No, who has this misconception? You've been repeating this for a year. No, no. It's the same shit. And it's always the reason is that people just don't want to be members because he doesn't give enough value. If you're not a member, you still get the content. You understand that, right? Yeah. You still, you still get it. And when you're a member, you get the perks. <laughs> it's not so you you could join just because you want the perks. I'm going away. Or you could join just because you want to support the channel and throw some fucking coin at DSP. Or you want to support... Or you want to be a member because you want a special badge, which also is a perk. So yeah. It's, it's either the perks or support, but he wants you to think that it's just support the channel. The, the content continues. The difference is you're either crowdfunding it or you're not. All right, it's not Netflix where I buy the subscription, now I can access Netflix. I don't buy the subscription, I can't access Netflix. That you're not purchasing anything. Okay. You're crowdfunding. And if anything, I think it's on Twitch and YouTube. They've basically, um, what they've done is they don't like kind it when you say crowdfunding, though. Are on purpose. It's kind of negative. All right? They have. They misrepresented it on purpose so that they could present it as something that's really not. It's not. You're you not misrepresent what? You are like, no. No, no, no. And he's just, like, trying to put some thoughts in your head that are just stupid just to convince himself. That's all he's trying to do. Convince himself that those members dropped so hard because... You just are scared for his channel. And not because they were all sock accounts. Not sock accounts, but gifted memberships. That didn't get extended because those people didn't care or they never gave money DSP anyway. So why they would why would they do that? So the conception They here could is, just wait for another gifted sub. Oh, well if DSP gaming may get suspended, I'm not Which gonna is perfectly fine. That's the, the, the fucking thing, man, with YouTube. Those people that he's talking to right now, they're supposed to have no responsibilities. They come here to chill and hang out and look at video games and 
I don't know, do whatever they do and just mind their own business and have fun. And this dude just puts so much on them and tries to convince them so many things. Just uh, get a grip, I'm a man. Member. Because if I become a member, get a grip or of I renew this my dick. membership, or I give memberships, and DSP Gaming gets suspended, Psych. then they go away, and I wasted my money. That's not true at all. You still supported me in the business. I still get that fund, you know, that helps me pay my bills and everything. Because here's, here's the situation right now. We have a giant dip in support this week. This is the last week of the month. And what's and happening yep, now is the same next thing. month when I get paid by YouTube, it's going to be way less than usual. Yo, they, he, he said this exact same thing today. The exact same thing. So how do I pay my bills? The exact same thing. Right? I'm going gonna... I'm gonna to get paid less next month. Yeah, that's what happens when you... That, that's what happens when you get less money. You get paid less. See a do we have to explain giant this? Giant dip. Do we have to point this out? And what I make, and it's because directly of the trolls. Directly of and the that's trolls. Not fair. It's not directly of the trolls. It's literally not directly of the trolls. Nobody prevented you from not getting any more members. It's just you didn't. They expired and they're gone. What did I do? Did I change the content? What did I do? Out? No. Did I falter? in the face of these people threatening me and doing fucked up yeah you pleaded them you pleaded them to drop the strikes you pleaded them you begged wings trolls not even your trolls and you said your trolls were nice because they gave you constructive criticism that helps you improve and those restreamers they're not criminals anymore they belong in jail they're actually pretty chill dudes right right and then we begged the wings trolls please please it wasn't exactly like that, but it was the DSP equivalent of actually begging on his knees. Things? No. I kept here every day putting out the same fun content for you guys. I oh. haven't changed. Whoa, I haven't changed. Now, I thought you changed, DSP. Haha. <laughs> was a direct result of <laughs> I'm moving the goalposts. Controlling activities. Now everything's going to suffer because of it, and that's messed up. So, yeah, it, it, gets, me, it gets me upset. It does. It gets me upset because I don't blame people for reacting that way at all. I don't. I can't blame you. But at the same time, I don't like it when my fate is put into the hands of people committing crimes. And uh, no. Your fate is put in the hands of degenerates similar to Derek. That's who your fate is put in the hands of. There's no law. In and you put it yourself because it was easy. Because it's the easy thing to do, is to give everybody else the responsibility about all of your life fucking decisions. And what games you're going to play and how much money you're going to make all depends on them. All that shit. The business, the life, the cat, everything. Enforcement. Everything. And if it doesn't go the good way, it's this. This is where we are. Members dropped. Now we're having a big segment about it. Blaming trolls. Coping. You don't need to stop the crimes. This is this is what YouTube his life is, care. and then he's surprised. He's stressed out, and he has to drink. YouTube's like, well, just protect this our own legally, and there's no one to stop the bullshit. I'm tired of it, you know. So the question, and just because he wanted the easy way, that spawned a bunch of other stuff that made it much harder for him such as people that monitor how much money he makes and how much money he spends monitor his uh, champions account just because he wanted everything to be easy and sometimes the easy way is hard question is what which is some like confucius do, level of uh quote. Right? i mean for me i'm going to continue on his business as usual but yeah it gets me down it does for me here here's the truth i need a big win of some sort and I don't know what it's going to oh, be. Oh, get a load of this. This is amazing. This is a beautiful segment. I need a big win. Right? I mean, for me, I'm going to continue on as business as usual. But yeah, it gets me down. It does. For me, here, here's the truth. I need a big win of some sort. And I don't know what it's going to be. I don't even know. You know? But I feel like what we need is we need something really positive to happen. I don't know what it would be. I really have no... I couldn't even fathom what it could possibly be. But if something really nice and positive happened around dsp gaming right now that would be great and he's he's stroking his beard how is this not a hint hint segment how is this not a hint hint is he gonna pretend this is not an actual beg for gifted subs we just came from talking about gifted subs and now we're talking about something positive happening around dsp gaming that's a big win It'd be great to just have something cool happen. Something like, wow, cool. That was cool. And that was cool. And cool, unexpected, and positive. And fun and wow. And everyone fun. Got, got something cool out of that.
and everyone got something cool out of that. What would that be that everyone would get something cool out of that? I don't know, chat. I'm gonna trust you on this. I think you you would know. You know. And that's just not happening right now. And that's the problem is when you're negative. No, it's not a pizza party. It's not negative. a pizza party. Because for a pizza party, only DSP would eat pizza. What's going to happen? I don't know. Uns it's literally just gifted members. That's all he he's asking. Certainty. Negativity. Negative, negative. Negative, so negative. forward positive. You know, doing my best. You know, guys, I've been around for 14 years. <laughs> I've seen this happen no, before. No, what a fucking joke. This is such a pathetic salesman's pitch. Pathetic. Likely it's going to happen again. All right, we go in these waves, right? These waves of, of bit, up and down. Can't even and up be and a down. telemarketer. The entire time I've been doing this is that sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, sometimes you're in the middle, but sometimes you get peaks and valleys, right? And I refuse. Absolutely refuse. What? Give up? To be defeated by law-breaking scumbags. I'm not going to have that You've happen. been defeated a long time ago, DSP. This this narrative of, of DSP winning or losing and stuff like that, that's been decided a long time ago. DSP been lost since the time he opened his very first credit card. He's lost. Because then he found out something. He found out you can do whatever you want. That shit is free. You can spend it all. You don't have to give it back. You can just be declare bankruptcy like Michael Scott someday. You can just say, hey, I declare bankruptcy. I'm not. I'm gonna hey, big ups for the King Jad raid. Content, no matter ups, where dude. it is or what, what I'm doing, I'm going to make Welcome content everybody. you guys and we're going to have a good time every single Yeah, so DSP lost a long time ago. We're just looking at the, I don't know, the fallout of him losing for the last 15 years. Even over 15 years. Single freaking day. You understand? Um, But it's just sad that right now things are in the limbo way that they are. I don't like this. I don't like having people come to the stream and be like, well... Normally, I would love to become a member or give some memberships and help the channel, but I'm not going to do that now because I'm feeling uncertain. Or, you know, wow, normally I come here and I feel real positive, but, you know, I don't like that. No. But isn't that, by this logic of uncertainty in somebody that enjoys DSP, isn't it now the time to become a member and actually show him how the community backed him up when this was going on and they helped him out defeat the trolls? Isn't it now the time? But no, he gaslit himself into thinking that it's the time to not do that. To do the opposite. Bullshit. We gotta stop this bullshit together somehow, you know? I don't know. And, uh... Yeah, actually, when a, when a raid happens, I just saw it, it pops up on top. Kind of like a notification type of thing. So big ups for that, I, I saw it happen. You know, again, I don't know I don't know what it is. What's, what's the big win? What's the get. big win that everybody can benefit from? The big win surrounding DSP gaming that everyone can benefit from. And it's out of nowhere, like an RKO. It's really positive. Like uh, Magic Johnson. Right? That would make us Ooh, that wasn't the best, was it? A little better. Because certainly I need it. I need some. I need injection in my arm or something good, you know? But I don't know what that's going to be. Pizza party. Oh, he needs an injection. Okay, so we're, we're actually doing drugs at this point. Is it Saturday? I don't know. You know, here we are again. He needs a financial injection from an angel investor who's going to invest in a lot of stock for DSP Gaming. You know, in a situation where now this week I already bought one game. I got to buy another game on Tuesday. Now there's a pizza party on Saturday. So it's money, money, money. It's like, oh my God, here we go again. In my head, and I got to think about it. Normally it wouldn't be a big deal, but now I'm thinking in my head, well, now I'm not going to have a lot of support next month when I get paid by YouTube. Normally, when it's not a big deal, he still complains about it. YouTube, I'm going to have like Even when it's not a big deal, he complains about it. So it is a big deal. Significantly if less you got to complain about not getting gifted memberships or memberships, then it's a big deal for you. What do I do now? I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of thinking that way. Really. And it's funny because people are like, well, then just don't mention it. If I don't mention it, then, then it will never, ever, I'll, I won't get the support I need. Oh no, you know, he I had to admit it. If I don't beg, I'm not going to get money because people don't actually give me money for the stuff that I put out and appreciate the quality. They just give me money because they feel bad for me. I have to. I don't like doing this. I don't like oh. having this thought in my mind. I don't like having to say shit on my streams about support. I hate it. I absolutely would love to just sit here and put content out for you guys every day and never have to mention it. That would be my ideal state. Yeah, and I would like to do that too. That would be my ideal fucking state. Imagine sitting down and playing video games and just getting all the money that you could, that covers everything that you want to do. Like, this is, of course, it's an ideal state, DSP. It's an ideal state. To literally never have to mention it ever again. Yeah, well, of course. <clears throat> I'm not at liberty to do that. And that sucks, okay? 
And like I told you guys last week when all this happened, you know, long term, I can get out of this situation. But the solution is to stick it out for years. Because right now I have no What about when you said that if the channel is gone, that's it, no more content, especially for the trolls. What about when you said that? And then you were like, well, actually, there's going to be, I'm not going to stop anything. No credit. I don't. Because if he gets taken down from, from any platform, he's streaming somewhere else the same day. And he's going to make 60,000 tweets about it. So everyone's going to know. Two years ago, I declared bankruptcy. I have no credit right now. Zero. Especially I'm the trolls. I'm making ends meet with the shit that I need to afford. And eventually what's going to happen is there will be slow growth on DSP Gaming. So a little bit of growth every year, a little bit of increase of what I'm doing, right? And then within a few years, I say a few, it's probably going to be like five. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to refinance my home at that point. And then I'll have be able to use any kind of equity I have in my house to, to get me caught up on everything that's my problems now. And then I'll be good. And then you won't have Phil on every stream saying, hey guys, remember... You can support by doing this and doing this and this. And, oh no, memberships are down and now I'm worried. You never have this, to- uh, Trolls in, in like 10 years are gonna use these clips when they show a, a 50 year old DSP who has done nothing, but surrounded himself with more toys. Hear that ever again. Never. It would basically be gone. But the problem is I gotta get to that point and I have to not see my business implode on itself because of illegal activity. That's the challenge, right? The challenge is sticking it out for years to get to that point and also have to deal with this bullshit we're dealing with right now. And I don't like that, you know? I just don't like that at all, all right? And I've had enough, honestly. Like, I'm fed up at this point. Like so I what said, are you going to do about like, it? Like, what you are actually going to do about it? Not somebody giving you money for you complaining about it. Because complaining is not actually doing anything about anything. It's just complaining. You're just saying how you, you're not happy with the situation. You want it to change, but you're not actually changing anything. To have a day of positivity and fun. Oh, he just wants to have positivity and fun. Well, this is like a, a Barbie cartoon, but instead it's just a middle-aged man. So it obviously doesn't work out. And not have to worry about that shit, but how do you stop? Right? How do you stop yourself from worrying about all this shit behind the scenes that's going on? Like, I don't know. I don't how know. Do I, I don't when know. he says that, I don't know. It's really funny. <laughs> he says it in uh, this specific way every time. I don't know. Oh, I wish I knew I had a way to turn off my brain, right? But Yeah, that's why you play champions. Anyway. It always has these thoughts in the back of your head about what's going on and everything. You know, a big win, a big positive win would be great right now. Where we get that win, I don't know. Of course. See? We don't know that's anything. Not even a, a vague idea of a plan. Because his plan is to wait for somebody to wail out on memberships. That's what we're going to do right that's now. That's the whole we're plan. Talk that's plan A, B, and C. And now he's going to talk about games. So obviously this video is now useless. So let's see what else we got on the menu. Daily Wrap. This was uh, Street Fighter 35th Anniversary. Jasper is featured in this one. So you know I'm going to hate that. Uh, what do we got? Midnight fights. Oh, yeah. So we don't care about it. Uh, him complaining about adult language and being cringed out by a game that got remastered. So uh, what about the views? Oh, my God. What is this Pac-Man? Pac-Man number five with 275. This is a depressing number. No wonder he was crying about views and engagement. It's like if this was my channel and I was doing this full time. It would be depression mode. I would be getting into beef with people. Like he did with like Keemstar and in Rich. Aha. Uh -huh. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see what what is this level one podcast? I'm back. Big Phil's day off. I think uh I already watched this. I don't know what else is happening. There was this rumor that Chris Chan uh escaped jail, which was really funny. So I guess I might close out the stream on on some other lol cow news i guess but it, it's not even news because it's not verified or anything it's just somebody shit posted about it <laughs> let's see this christian uh escapes from jail let's see some memes about it uh yeah of course not of course he didn't twitter versus christian prison escape let's see this video about it from uh bow blacks bow 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 oh this guy 
So Chris Chan is yet again trending on Twitter. And if you don't know who Chris Chan is at this point, despite being in the process of- Ooh, everybody else sounds mind-numbingly loud compared to DSP. DSP is the most quiet person, not even on the internet, on everything. He's always the most quiet guy. But also he yells a lot, so it kind of cancels it itself out of watching Twitter versus Chris Chan part three, the very, very brief and bare bones summary of the situation is that this person is mentally ill to the point of legitimately believing that we will one day have a dimensional merge where fictional characters in real life will eventually coexist with each other. And they also somehow thought it was a good idea to have sex with their elderly mother, which has resulted <laughs> them in getting locked up in jail. But apparently they recently escaped. We found this out when Ibis Mojo 72 tweeted out, Chris Chan has escaped, showing a 4chan post that says, see Chris Chan trending on Twitter. Apparently he went to his trial, went to the bathroom in court five minutes before trial, fucking climbed out of the window in the bathroom and ran away. Police are searching for him but can't fucking find him. Been missing for five hours. How does that fat fuck run so fast? 8-Bit Prodigy responds, is this true? To which Ibis Mojo responds, I'm not 100% sure, but Chris Chan has tried to escape before. And no, this is not true. Come on, there's no factual evidence. To prove that this is in any way true. And 4 no responds by saying, Christian after escaping and beating up 15 guards. Out of my way. I'm going to see my mother. <laughs> I want this guy to read every meme I ever see from now on. He he reads every single caption. Or Lambda says, SCP has breached containment. Ibis Mojo responds, sleep tight knowing Chris Chan is out there somewhere. Explodinator quote tweets Ibis and says, leaked footage of Chris Chan. So yeah, you got the point. You got the point. It's just a bunch of memes. Basically, that are all super loud, so I'm gonna skip this. Uh, let's see what else we got. What else do we got? Chris Chan. But Chris is a... Uh, it's a weird thing, man. It's, it's something else. It's truly something else. Chris Chan did not escape from prison. Facts. <laughs> and then the live leak footage. This is fantastic. This is actually awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this. Hope this isn't loud. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Chris, man. Oh, this... Uh, something else. Just something else. I don't know. What can we watch for like a good closer? Uh, Cyrax, uh, King Cobra, something that's fast, something quick. What's happening with Wings? Uh, Wings of Redemption something. Let's see, is upset he has low viewers. Let's see, this, uh, quality content. Oops. Pimps. Smash booty cheeks. Smash booty cheeks. Smash Shut up, booty cheeks. Shut up, Lumma, you all the hired hoodlums. I had to go around my asshole to get my elbow. <laughs> What is this fucking quote, man? I just can't fucking do it. Yo, you want to watch some uh, some cooking with Jack? Maybe actually not even Jack, but we can watch some DSP cook. Maybe after this. <laughs> really? All right, so we're playing games. What's happening here? Okay, dislike the stream. Really? Where the fuck you come from? Trash bag that's so unique that it only sold at a Dollar General and it doesn't really hold smell. So like anything you put into it, it actually makes the meat worsen and like go go bad faster. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, get out of here. This is the boringest lol cow. Uh, what do we got? Let's do cooking with the king. There was the, the, the cooking with Jack. Um, there was, what was it? A, a party salad? Party salad? Uh, let's, let's go with this one, like, real quick. A uh, party? Uh, okay, cooking with Jack. Uh, party cheese salad. Yeah, this thing was on a, on a whole new level of grotesque cooking 
and uh, I, I don't even know if I can call it cooking. It's cooking in, in quotes. It's quote unquote cooking. Do you know? It's like when when kids cook with mud and make like meatballs. That's the the man child equivalent of that. A time it is. It's time for Aunt Marta's uh, An actual person who has access to all these cooking appliances. Unfortunately, let me just make sure the audio is okay because I don't want to be killing people at this point. It's a double header. That's right. Last week we did Aunt Myrna's recipe with the coleslaw. Amazing. This week we're doing party cheese salad. When I saw her make this in Alabama, I was like, Eesh. I'm not sure about some of these ingredients, but then I tasted it and it's like a dessert. Uh, <laughs> it's really cool. So let's get this thing started. We're going to cook all this on the stove. Then we're going to pour it in this glass dish, which oh, I've never yeah. used in my whole life. Oh, yeah. I think my mom gave me this, but I'm going to have a chance to use this. Uh, but... Is this a lol cow? Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to chill it. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. Let's get started right now. I mean, this is an unironic tutorial. That's about about what I can tell you. So, Wait so yeah. See this. Just make up your own mind based on what you see. I never would have put these ingredients together had it not been for Aunt Myrna. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody would. Cream cheese, pimentos, Cool Whip, crushed nuts, any kind that you like. I'm using pecans. Lemon, or you can use lime jello. Lime jello. Celery, bell pepper, <laughs> pineapple, and American cheese. Can of course, American this? cheese. This we have to. Let's go to the stove this right now. This is crazy, Jack. Started. Take your crushed pineapples and See pour in the pan. Some crushed pineapples. Lime. Let's put them on a on like 1.5 or something. It's gonna sound funnier as well. We're gonna do two small packets. I got a large one. All right. Combine all the ingredients over a low or medium flame. Okay. Oh, was this sugar? Never mind. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what utensil to use for this. So, I'm just gonna mix it up right now. Yeah, I don't think it, the utensil matters at this there point. We I think we've, on, we've you, left everything behind. The wooden spoon is gonna stick to the wooden spoon. Nothing matters. Right, so we're gonna get this all mixed up. We're gonna make a Jello salad. Okay, once everybody. the Jello is dissolved. This is uh, this is Jack's party, and Phil's party is a pizza party. So I would kind of rather be at pe uh, at the pizza party. You're gonna add, I chopped up the cream cheese. You're gonna add all your cream cheese in there. Of course, we put the cream cheese in the and you're pineapple. Going to mix that until it totally mixes in, totally melts down. Of course. As I've seen Gordon cream Ramsay do much down. a million times. In there. This has a nice it. consistency of um, insert DSP joke here. I need to add the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna add the chopped uh, celery. Chopped celery going in. Bell peppers Pimento. going in. We got them. Pimentos. Nuts. <laughs> Fucking pimentos. We're going to mix that in. Dude, this is... Wow. I can't even begin to explain to you how amazing tasting this was. It looks horrible, but I'm yeah, telling you... I'm, I'm going to need some convincing. And I'm going to need some convincing. So I'm going to need a, a full blood test after you, you eat this shit. Mine turns out as good as hers. Have as good as hers. I'll be in business. Okay, I've turned the flame off. I'm just mixing it in now. He does have half a million subs, though. <laughs> so yeah, this was uh, this was meaningful content back in 2012. He's probably gone better since 2012. I'm gonna mix that in gently. Don't wanna spill over. Regular. Okay, so now we pour so it all in a pan, and it looks exactly like this. We <laughs> we sprinkle American cheese on top, and then we Try put it, it in the oven. Or in the fridge or something. Like this doesn't matter. He put jello in it. He put like lemon jello sure. <laughs> in American cheese and pimentos. Bell peppers. What was the other thing? I don't know. Look at, can you see it? It's can crazy. It? This is like. It's, on a plate. it's beautiful. On. What is beautiful about this? It almost has like a pudding effect. Uh, the pudding effect. On, uh... We're going to give that a try. Look at mm, that. Pudding salad. Mm. Wow. So good. Oh, wow. So good. I know it. You better of eat course, this whole thing. Good, so. Here's oh, and he put like a bunch of Miracle Whip. It's too delicious tasting. Or Cool Whip, yeah. Yeah, he can put like a massive amount of Cool Whip. And, and pineapples. So yeah, delicious. Uh, let's let's go on to something a little bit... Uh, 
I don't even know what it is. Is it better? Is it worse? Let's see. Poorly cooking with the king. Uh, cooking with the king. Let's see him. The king. Uh, let's endure the authentic Italian sauce. I've watched this and it's it's super long. So let's watch something kind of short and then wrap it up and go home. What is this? More bacon, egg. What is this? Damn. Third world. Damn third world countries. What? <laughs> I mean, I I've probably seen this before, but it was a long time ago anyways. What's going on, everyone? It's DSP, and welcome to another episode of... Of course, the DSP audio is just... It's just DSP audio, and this came out in what? Oh, this is a re-upload. Never mind. Poorly cooking with the king. Although in this episode, we're actually going to go a little bit more healthy than some of my previous uh, recipes, simply because a lot of people have been complaining, and uh, I guess it's time to show that I don't only eat, you know, things that might be high in fat or high in cholesterol. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to whip up a nice tuna salad sandwich, but we're actually going to do it a little bit differently, because unlike regular tuna salad sandwiches, it's not just going to be a sandwich, we're going to make it a panini. Wow. But I will show you what I mean in just a little bit. Um, the first thing we need to do is talk about it. That, that truly transcends it as a sandwich. Once you make it a panini, it's just like Radiant. a work of art. <clears throat> for any sandwich, obviously, for tuna salad, the first thing you need is tuna. Now, depending on how much you're going to make, and All right, probably yeah. the one ingredient got... in tuna salad is usually mayonnaise. He meanders so much, man. That, that Jack video of him making that grotesque, disgusting salad was seven minutes long. And I watched it in like, what, two minutes on 1.5 and skipping through the whole thing. This shit is 22 minutes long. The dude is making a sandwich. A sandwich. We got to say what each ingredient is, what the country of origin is, what the calories are. We got to say the, the fat amount, everything. But in this case, I actually do prefer this mayonnaise. Uh... And it's Miracle Whip. That's delicious. And the pickles, those pickles look nice. A sandwich, which is pretty cool. Oh, I yeah. personally love bread and butter pickles. I think it's delicious with tuna salad. Um, for tuna salad, there's other ingredients that typically you would include. For example, uh, some chopped celery, some chopped parsley. Um, All some right, but we don't have any of those, so we're not putting them in. Let's go to the part where we're actually dry making the thing. Try to get it as dry as you can. Okay. Okay. Last thing we're gonna <laughs> All that right in the sink. Wet and soggy tuna salad. Let's get it. So that's done. And then once you're done with that, you take a knife, any knife. It could be a butter knife, but I just grabbed this knife because it was the closest one. Okay. And you bend your lid, be very careful, and you just take that and you get your tuna into a bowl. The dude has to give you a tutorial on anything. How to open a can of tuna. Now, depending on how big, how much tuna salad you're making, obviously you might need a much bigger bowl than this. But in this case... <laughs> I'm only making enough for a sandwich or two here. I'll probably save a little bit because I'm sure this is going to be more than enough for one sandwich. And uh, so, therefore, you might want a bigger bowl later yeah, on. Yeah, DSP, yes, yes. If I'm going to make a big amount of food, I'm going to need a big thing to put it in. That is, that is a good point. You don't have to push that point for a minute straight, but it's a good point. I give that to you. I agree. All depends. Can openers, especially the ones they make today, because they don't make them like they used to. Oh yeah, they don't make the can openers because DSP can't use them. I learned from experience. They made them back in the day much better when he didn't use can openers. He just seen people open cans and was like, "Wow, these can openers sure are good, man." Don't freaking gouge yourself here. It would have been real funny if he cut himself. Uh, on the can, I mean. Obviously, get as much out of the can as you. Enough tuna in that bowl now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Miracle Whip. Okay. Now, depending on how much tuna you use is how much Miracle Whip you should use. What they yes, say, yes, yes. say is for every six ounces of tuna, you should use a half a cup of mayonnaise and or Miracle Whip. In this case, <clears throat> I'm going to add it, see how much, you know, what it looks like and if I need to add more. Um, half a cup for six ounces. Well, I've got ten ounces, so you figure... I might end up using all of my Miracle Whip here, actually, because I don't have a heck of a lot left. Okay, so... so okay. <laughs> just let's, let's just skip to making the sandwich. It's Please make the sandwich less, already. Um, I think it looks a little bit too goopy right now. It looks so, goopy. Just experimenting, like I said. It's, it's, it's hard to do when you're not doing it exactly to the ingredients that the recipe tells you. And in this case, like I said, the recipe said do a half a cup 
per six ounces. I think that recipe was absolutely wrong because if you do a half a cup per six ounces, that thing's gonna be drooling. I mean, that was, what I put in there was about roughly half a cup. And that was 10 ounces of tuna, and I think it was too much. But I also think that they were assuming you were putting a lot of other ingredients into it, like the celery and parsley and onions and other things. But anyway, this is roughly your tuna salad. Actually, it looks like it is a little bit dry in the center. Mix it up a little bit more. Now, what are we going to do to make this not just a regular tuna salad sandwich? Well, <laughs> how is it going to be special? Here's what Let's we're see. Gonna do. We're going to do something Over here, special. Ooh. I have oh, yeah, the two unique things that can make this different. Two unique things, a toaster and a press. I have a piece of ciabatta bread oh, and, and the bread. a panini grill. It's special. Okay? Now, let me tell you something. This panini grill is amazing because this panini grill, it'll cost you maybe the cheapest one I've seen in a store is maybe like 30 bucks. They go all the way up to like 80 bucks depending on how big they are and all the options and things like that. This thing is amazing. It turns regular sandwiches into like gourmet. <laughs> and then the... Uh... You probably look it up and the price back then was like three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, they could go from like twenty bucks to like hey, eighty lunch, bucks. Really? I mean I've had so many days where I just made a regular sandwich, I was like, eh, it's just a meat, you know. It's a it's a ham sandwich and you toss it on there and it melts the cheese and it gets every Whoa. everything nice and warm. It's a really wow. it takes the pulls the flavor out Is of it. Is that things. how it works? Explain to me why it works like that. So I highly recommend for anyone who, who eats lunch. You know, it's like there, there's these two plates that get really hot, and then they melt the cheese. Regular grill as well, if you don't have like a, a stove like I have. Oh, and look at this. It's the, the King of Hate apron. I don't think I've uh, mentioned it before. I think I did once. It's very special uh, custom DSP clothing. And you, or a frying pan. You can use this as like a griddle. Um, so I'm going to turn this guy on. I'm going to turn it on high heat. For a sandwich. Now this is ciabatta bread. Okay. Ciabatta bread is special because ciabatta it's bread. It's special. Oh, just smash the camera <laughs> with the ciabatta bread. Hold on, let me zoom out. <laughs> ciabatta bread is special because it is a th a different consistency than regular bread. It is a thicker bread. Um, and what this is made to basically do is to it, it, it grills very well. It when it toasts. Oh my God! This is so mind-numbingly stupid. Okay, make the sandwich. What happens here? We make the sandwich. Okay, put some well, lettuce on it. No, I'm going to anyway. And then we're going to go ahead and put that on top. All right. So when this cooks on our panini grill, Great. you're going to see it's going to toast it nicely. All right, let's skip and, uh, to the point where it's actually made. Leave it open. Boy, you see the steam come off of it right away. Whoa, that's because it's hot. We're going to put our tuna salad sandwich down. You probably want to position the bread a little bit back because when you close it like this, it's going to actually flatten the sandwich and pull that. Oh, so what yeah. I usually do is I do this. I put the bread a little bit back and I already angle the top like this. Some grills are lucky you can do that. And then that way when I push it down. Oh, yeah. You know he got the, the high-end one. Voila. So grill for about five minutes. All right, man, this is dumb as shit. Look at his uh, hair for a little bit, I guess. This is the last frame of this stream. Uh, anyways, thanks everybody for uh, swinging by and watching this this dumb, stupid podcast. And I'm going to see you next time, right? Sounds good. All right. Uh, I'm not going to play music because there's really no point. I'm just going to go. Sounds good, everybody. Big ups. See you around.